I'm coming for all of you. Right now, there's a 15-year-old sophomore in high school who has no idea they're studying nursing just so they can wipe my ass in 17 years. I'm 50 and single. That's a fantastic combination. I'm going to spend my golden years dating a handful of spit and a jug of Astroglide. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast, coming to you live on a Tuesday evening, right in your ears, right in your fucking head, right in your skull. Put your earbuds in and crank them up, and right now, listen to me, because I'm about to fucking rock out. I got my guitar right here. That's right. There's my git box. Uh, and I'm going to play you some tunes, man. I'm going to get uh, you, what, you, you, you should have seen your smile when I broke out my guitar. You said, oh, my God, this is my podcast. I've been waiting for it all night long. All right. Uh, or all day long or all week long. You've been waiting a week since I've been here. And I want to thank everybody who contacted me and reached out after last week's show to say, hey, Mike, you actually sounded happy. That was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, when I started talking about memories of stuff and you start touching about things that make you happy, I sound happy. Also, I heard from people who were like, hey, you know, uh, the show sounds really different. It's almost like two separate halves because in the beginning, you're uh, you're talking crazy fast. And then in the end part, it's like uh, it's different where you're not. And I can explain that to you if you want, if you want me to do it, because I actually explained it to my friend Max, who was one of the people who wrote me to mention this. And Max is going to be like, nobody else wrote you. And I'm going to be like, no, well, only a couple of people wrote me, but who cares? It gives me something I'm fucking talking about now, so back off. Jump. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, see, I'm trying to slow it down. No, I'm trying to rein myself in, even with a fucking spitty mouth. Eh, God damn it. Why does this happen every time I talk now? I, I'm, I'm doomed to it. I'm doomed to old man mouth. I'm doomed to have, like, fucking spit in the corners of my mouth. I'm going to be in a rest home somewhere. They're going to steal whatever fucking money I have hidden in a goddamn sock. Uh, see, you know how you avoid that? You know how you do that? You jerk off in the same sock. That's how you keep them from stealing your fucking money. Hold on. I got to clean my... Fuck it. <laughs> I had to back away from the microphone there while I, I fucking swallowed. Uh, which normally, you, you want to hear someone swallowing on a microphone, don't you? Isn't that, uh, that, that's the whole money shot of the whole porn when you hear a girl swallow. You, want, you just want to get that microphone in there real quick and listen to it. You don't really. Uh, there's no, I mean, there's swallow porns, but there's none to get right in there and you just go. <sighs> Although I guess maybe there should be. I think I just created a whole genre of porn, which is fucking hard to do. Because every genre of porn has already been created. Don't kid yourselves. There's no doubt it's out there. I just read a story today. Holy fuck. This isn't even porn. This is real fucking life. And I can't believe this exists because this fucking universe is ruined. Uh, there's a, a gay white dude in who's really powerful and has like a bunch of money. He's a Democratic donor. And apparently he lives in West Hollywood. And his here's his deal. He uh, He's a gay dude who signed up on a bunch of gay dating sites. And he likes that. He's a white dude. I should tell you this. He's 63. Uh, eight inches cut. I only know that because I read his fucking ad because it was in the story about him. Jesus, I, I should have. I could have said something else. I could have said that he was a you know a, a family man, but uh, he didn't put that in the ad for fuck's sake. Uh, no, he put in you know that he's sixty three years old and, it, and he's some bullshit about let me take you to a place you've never been before. Are you willing to travel with me in a place and I'll let you? I'll teach you about yourself. Just a bunch of horseshit. Whatever people put in ads. I thank God seriously that I have not ever had to place a personal ad like that. I can't imagine. The disappointment the person would have when they saw me, I, 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 or, or, or I had to live up to the bullshit that I typed into a paragraph because I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie. I mean, I would literally just go, "Hey, um, not exactly a self-starter guy who's down on himself all the fucking time, and uh, probably will inordinately dump a bunch of stuff on you to try to make himself feel better, uh, and hope that you, you know, but also will worship you. Let's put it that way. We'll also fucking do whatever you say, and we'll just ask you to please tell him what you want so he can do it." Uh, that'll go right into the ad. Look, I just wrote my own ad, and oh my god, I can hear everybody swiping left immediately. Uh, I was on Tinder for the short while. That was go, go by year four. It was on that, that did not work out very well. Um, so, folks, here we are. We're talking. This guy, so this dude's fucking sixty three, and it was on some ad, and uh, I can't even. It's, this fucking world is ruined again. It's just fucking ruined. We've talked about it before. But this dude is a sixty three year old gay dude, and what he does is he wants to find young black guys to come over to his house. And, uh, and I don't even know if there was sex involved. I read two different articles on this and what he wants them to do, cause they, they had a bunch of like his transcripts of his texts. By the way, he's a 63 year old man who uses the letter R for the word R and the letter U for the, for the letter U for the word U. Um, fuck you at this point. I, you're not young anymore. You're old. It's okay. Give yourself over. You're 63. Stop putting young black men's cocks in your mouth and grab a pipe. Honestly, go ahead, retire to your rich, retire to your library 
and and go read gothic porn or go surf the web or whatever the fuck you need to do. You don't need to fucking. And I know. Look, we we get to this. It's not when you hear what he does, you're gonna go. Well, that's not about fucking sex, and it's not. It's about power and bullshit and everything else in this fucking world. Because I'm telling you, everything is ruined, as we've talked about many many times. Ten years. In ten years, I've seen it whittle down. I I you know, ten years ago, I'm sure you could listen to a fucking show, and I'm like, oh man, this fucking world world is ruined. And then you listen now, and you're like, holy god, what the hell happened? In ten years, we should really go back. I mean, I would love to listen to year one and just, and just, well, not even, fuck, and you don't have to listen to it either. Let's not do that. Let's just proceed with year 10 and be fine. Um, but this dude, man, he, he's, he had a 63-year-old white dude, and he's rich. And in this article, there's not only texts of him with escorts, but there's photos of him with Governor Jerry Brown. Uh, as soon he will be president. Uh, that's me doing the dead Kennedys. Um, by the way, our friend David Hernandez is doing, uh, um, if you've not been a friend of his on Facebook, you should go because every, every day this month, he's been debunking the JFK assassination because there is nothing David is not, if not topical. Oh my Christ. That man has, he has zeroed in on everything you need to know from 1963 and he will fucking expose it day by day on his page. He's hard hitting is what he is. He's a journalist, but first and foremost, he's like, you know what? I'm going to start with 63 and then maybe flash forward and solve some other important cases. Uh, I mean, he might, you know what? Eventually David might fix, uh, fish that girl out of the well. Maybe he goes and gets baby Jessica out of the well. Could you do that, David? That'd be great. As I mock him from a distance because I'm not home to mock him. Uh... But <laughs> he's all over that Kennedy assassination, boy. He, he's so tired of you and your conspiracy theories. Uh, and so he's he's creating memes and he's putting up reasons why Oswald is guilty. And uh, every time I read them, I, I just think to myself of the scene in JFK where Kevin Costner has to show the courtroom all of his evidence. And it involves like four slides of a magic bullet and then Kevin Bacon in a powdered wig. Like literally that's all, that's the entire case Oliver Stone and Kevin Costner laid out for a conspiracy theory to assassinate JFK. Meanwhile, Max has actual, like literally Max himself, he did fucking uh, forensic tests on the bullets from the rifle. He'll, he'll tell you there were shirt fibers from Oswald in the fucking gun. I'm like, how the fuck? You're busy painting. Like, what the fuck are you doing? I, I'm guilty because I can only do one of these shows a week and then I get mad at myself that I don't do nearly enough work. David, not only is he painting this paintings for this show, but he is also getting to the bottom of one of the greatest controversies in the history of this nation. And I feel guilty about it because honestly, I don't, I don't have any answers regarding any assassinations at all, except for my own. And, and here's to say it will be self-inflicted and it'll be coming soon. So go ahead and keep your eyes out for that. Uh, eventually, I will do something. I, you know what? I almost want to have like a suicide challenge. That, that could be a good reality show. Like you know, how you have Russian roulette and you got like six bullets in a gun, but uh, five of them aren't really there, and there's only one bullet in the gun. What if you had like real life televised Russian roulette, but also you had like real life televised, uh, like fat guy noose competition. Like, a, just a fat guy in a fucking chair, and he had a thin beam. And the thing was, if he hanged himself. He dies. But if he, if he breaks the beam, he's so heavy he breaks the beam, we give him $50 million. That's worth the risk, right? I take that fucking risk. If they put together, you know, and I got to make sure there's no shenanigans. I mean, obviously, nobody's going to want to pay out the $50 million, but I got to make sure somebody backs it up with real American cash. But that's a t I think it's a bet I'd take. If you were like, hey, man, here's a sturdy rope and a thin beam. Let's get a fat guy in a chair. If he jumps and, and it fucking, unfortunately, his neck snaps, he dies. But... If somehow the beam snaps, he lives. It's like in the old days. Remember when they used to fucking hang a dude, and if the the rope broke, he got to go free. Fuck that, man. That's not enough of a goddamn prize. That dude's already... Imagine the trauma that guy went through just waiting for his hanging day, and then he's going to have a neck burn the rest of his fucking life, a rope burn around his fucking clavicle. He can't deal with that. No, man, you got to really make some serious incentive. Because in the old days, like I said, if you... Do, and isn't if you survive, and I don't even know if this is fucking true. This is all bullshit sh stuff that I heard. This is hearsay. This is the stuff David told me when he was debunking another myth. <laughs> I talked to Dave. Dave's a myth buster. That's what he is. He's like that fucking hot chick and the two bold English guys. Are they England English? I have no idea. All I know is that chick is hot, right? Isn't the myth busters girl like fucking banging? I think so. That's not a myth. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, you know what myth I try to debunk while I watch Mythbusters? How many times I can come in an hour? That's, that's the myth I try to bust. Uh, I have a record in mind, certainly. In an hour... I'm 50 now. Oh God, I'm not going to go into this. All right, what's your record for a night, though? I can. I, I have a pretty. I have, I have a decent record for a night. Although I don't know if I should go into that. Someday I'll tell that story. So, <laughs> what if I did? What if I blow by blow told you the whole story of how many times in a night, who it was with, where it was at, what positions? Because uh, you know when you when you uh, all right. 
uh, I'm not going to get into this, but still, there were a lot of positions. I mean, I've, I've done some crafty spinning around, and there was some stuff, because I was young at the time. Please believe me, this is millions of years ago. This isn't anytime soon. Because uh, right now, I mean, I'm alone. How many positions can you be when you're alone? There's uh, there's stomach down. You're, you're laying on your stomach and then just kind of like using friction in the in the, the sheets or whatever. Oh, God, why am I telling you masturbation stories? Nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> and then there's, you know, then there's on your back. Then there's, uh, oh, never, I'm, I'm shutting up. I'm shutting up. I'm not going to go into this. But uh, the point is, if, no matter what stories I told you about that, believe me, they would not nearly be as bad as this fucking guy who I just read this fucking story about, or these three stories about. And when I say just read, I mean I read this weekend. It's not like I read it just now. That's why I was doing research for the show. And I was like, man, I got to check out gay murders. That's what I want to talk about this week. Uh, you know, David's got the beat on the fucking JFK assassination. I got to get to the bottom of all these gay murders, this gay panic. This LGBTQMs, those, I gotta take care of those motherfuckers. Solve them at their root, at their base. Uh, so I go under a cover I, with my two grinder accounts, and I find some dudes, and I, I interview them through a hole in a wall. And uh, <laughs> that's my, de- I'm the, I'm the fucking gay detective. I'm the, I'm the, uh, the, the download detective. Holy shit, I just invented it. I'm the download detective. I play some ads on Grinder, and I interview these dudes about a case. Talk to them through a hole in the wall for a while. It's, it's. Fantastic. I'm hiccuping. I apologize. Uh, or that might be my body just rejecting the premise of the download detective on its own. Like, literally, my chest just went, nope, and it tried to vomit it out. Well, but, uh, too bad. I already said it, motherfucker. It came from the brain into the mouth. The, ch- the gut has nothing to do with it. I go brain and mouth. No gut. Uh, the gut is not involved in the download detective. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but again, I, like I said, David is out there. He's solving these crimes. He's very much on the trail of a killer. He's going to, he's going to, I'll tell you what David's going to do. Eventually, at the end of this month, he's going to blow the lid off this whole thing and he's going to put up the meme that puts Oswald in jail for good, right? Fuck it, Oswald's gotten off for all this time. What's that, 63? That's 40, that's 54 years, right? Uh, that's 54 years that Oswald's been running around a free man, dining out and having free lunches on the fact that he shot Kennedy and nobody thinks he did. But sure enough, Dave's going to put him in prison for once and for all. He's going to fucking track this motherfucker down. Uh, if I remember right, he likes to hang out. Uh, well, there's a I, he was at the book depository. That's where he worked. That's the last known place of work for Lee Harvey Oswald. I was, did he get a job after he got pinched? I don't know, when he got out? Uh, after he got out for not assassinating the president and the conspiracy was on board? All I know is, like I said, Dave, hard-hitting David is getting to the with the facts. He's got the meme that's going to put Oswald in the clink for good. You're going to the big house, Lee Harvey! You can't fucking fool us for another. It's not going to get to 60 years. You know what? You've skated uh, for 57 years on this bullshit. Your grass, you know, your nonsense, your Cubans and your fucking powdered wigs and Kevin Bacon and Joe Pesci with a rat on his head. And you hire an Oliver Stone to make a movie to make you look like you're fucking innocent. No longer, pal. You're getting nailed to the fucking wall by a curious Mexican in Naperville, Illinois. He's taking you down meme style. You're going out, Oswald. Uh, Lee Harvey, you are a madman. Uh, when you shot that president and your friends tried to take credit for shooting the president, oh man, I want to party with you, cowboy. <laughs> How have I never said that before in my life? How has nobody ever said that before? Somebody must have, right? When they saw stripes, they had to think that. <clears throat> oh, did you hear that catch in my throat? I didn't like it. Um,. So let's, all right, real quick, but are we, are we going to talk about gay dude or we got to talk about the beginning of the show uh, when people were talking? Oh, because last week. Because uh, here's the deal, man. Like, I'm trying to, uh, Max, you know, he needs uh, he needs the artwork done by, like, Tuesday nights. He needs to get the show done by then. And my brain hasn't been cooperating with me getting the show done by then. And so last week what I did was I tried to rush a show to get it out in time to call David so he wouldn't be mad at me so he could do the painting. And so the beginning of that show is just me rampaging, just fucking letting it go. And then I called him. And then, because I had that all cinched up with what it was going to be, uh, then I, I recorded the rest of the show after that. And and I was able to kind of relax a little bit and just tell a story. Because in the beginning, like I said, I was almost furiously rushing out a show. Because I, I, I told you, when I'm fucking alone, I'm just filling in silence. And I just want to talk because I don't want any fucking dead air. Uh, but then I wind up doing the show, uh, that, you know, when I tell a story and I kind of live in a story, you don't, nobody fucking cares about this bullshit. Why am I even going into it? You know what? And I apologize. I don't mean to say nobody cares. People have written me to complain that I should not say nobody cares. You wouldn't be listening if you didn't care. I totally understand that. Uh, it's just my default position to take myself out. It's just, it's, you know, take them out. I, it's, I just got to keep myself separated. That's what I need to do. Uh, I'm like my own personal offspring, uh, because I got low self-esteem. <laughs> um, but sometimes I'm great, but sometimes I'm not. You know, I'm like, a, you know what? I'm a fucking frosted mini wheat. That's who I am. Uh, some weeks you get the frosted side. It's all fun and glorious and we're all having a glamorous time. The other side you get the plain wheat. 
and I just go through you like fucking uh, a crazy sagebrush, and I clean all the shit out of your colon. I'm just no fun. I'm just, it's just like medicine. Ugh. But some weeks, haha, sugar, we're fun, we're having a party. I'm the frosted mini wheat. It's a podcast. Podcasts. Podcasts. Jesus, I can't even say it. Pod. Casts. My mouth went awry there. My mouth went rogue. Uh, perhaps there's a grassy knoll in my mouth. Perhaps I, you know, what, what conspiracy theory? Who did this? Uh, but this is the frosted mini weeds of podcasts. That's what it is. You get sometimes you get the frosting side. Sometimes you get the fucking shitty side with no fucking frosting. But they say that. Now here's the bullshit. All right, let's fucking get to the bottom of this frosted mini weeds nonsense. They come at you and they're like, ha ha. There's a fun side. Ha ha. There's a serious side. Boo hoo. So, but the thing is, you're eating the whole thing at once. You motherfuckers, frost the whole fucking thing. Why are you saving money on frosting? Fucking frost the whole goddamn thing. Have frosted mini wheats. Fuck you with your bullshit other side that isn't frosted. I'm furious at that. They're like, the kid in me likes this and the adult in me. Well, you know what? The adult in me is not eating any fucking breakfast. I don't give a fuck about 50. I want frosting. 50 and frosting. That's my fucking autobiography. I'm going to write it. 50 and frosting. Frost my fucking cereal, you dicks. Quit saving money on your fucking royal icing. That's right. I use that because I've watched baking shows for fucking two weeks and I know what a royal icing is. I could probably make a royal icing from scratch. I've never, I've never baked anything in my fucking life. I'm telling you right now, I could make a pecan shortbread from memory. A fucking terrible. I mean, and I'm not even bragging. It's not like that's a good thing where I'm like, yeah, I'm totally retaining this information. It's boo. I sit in the dark and I watch fucking strangers make cookies. The fuck is wrong with me? Grow up. Climb out of your fucking hole. Do something in your life. Your buddy Max is putting a murderer away. Why don't you go ahead and do something so productive? I sit here and I waste my fucking time. Fucking Max is cleaning house in this country. He's after scoff laws. He's putting away assassins. He's cleaning up old presidential business. <sighs> All right, we're going to breathe for just a second here. <laughs> I'm going to talk about, uh, what was I talking at the beginning of the show? Oh, and so that's why I talked about that. What people talking to me about last week's show seemed like it was split in half. kind of was. Because uh, I was chasing it in the beginning, and then I kind of relaxed in the end. But I'm always chasing it. That's the deal. It's like I try to talk, but again, talking at the speed of my head means literally talking about whatever the fuck comes vomiting out of my goddamn pie hole, and you're going to have to hear it and put it in your goddamn earbuds. It's going to happen. That's the way it's going to work. Uh, and you want to know how my brain works that run right there, that little phrase. I literally saw every word in my head just before I said it. And I'm doing it again right now. As I'm talking, I can go ahead and see these words inside my brain. Uh, I got a weird fucking skull. All right. Um, you know what? Let's just fucking cut me open. Let's just, you know, they're examining football players for CTE and seeing if they got concussions and bullshit. You know what you got to do? You just got to cut me open. You got to pin me down and take my brain and look inside there. I, I, like my, when I talked about taking my laptop in and opening it, I'm just a bunch of cocks would pour out, pour out of the fucking desktop or whatever. That's what's going to pour out of my head. You're just going to dump it out and words and letters. Uh, hi. So, um, oh, and also, let's do this. I'll thank people who were uh, wrestling fans last week, particularly our friend Jonathan Leonard, who's a listener to the show, who also, he, he writes for a wrestling publication. I may have mentioned Jonathan here a couple of times. But he, he fucking actually writes for a wrestling publication. And he and I cor- chorus, correspond, contrespond. Uh, I get a, there's a few really big wrestling fans who listen. And so they wrote me last week. They're like, dude, that show was fucking amazing. And, of course, that means that none of the rest of you liked it. But everybody else was like, yay, cool. Um, but Jonathan, he wrote me to tell me, uh, to send me, he sent me the Freebird song that I told you about last week. Where I was like, the Freebirds with Bad Street Atlanta GA, Baddest Street in the whole USA. Uh, bad street, nasty and hot. The further down the block you went, the better it got. <laughs> Hi. Um, but he's like, hey, watch your email. I sent you the Freebird song. My, fa- <laughs> my favorite thing is that he had to warn me. Like if I saw a Freebird song, I'd delete it. I don't give a fuck about spam. I don't care if it said, hey, you got to buy 40 dick pills to get the Freebird song. I would have bought it. Uh, and the spam I get is just, I'm incredulous. And, and I don't know, you know what? They must know who the fuck I am. Seriously, uh, sort of. Like they, let's put it this way. They know my age. They don't know anything about me because they keep sending me shit where they're just like, Hey man, do you want your dick hard 23 hours a day? And it's like, I, I mean, I suppose, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know if that's productive. Um, but that's how they get you. They try to fool. Like they said, if you're over 50, obviously your cock no longer works and you're a pussy. So anyway, here buy this or click here and see a short video telling you about the jungles of Vietnam and the secrets contained wherein. So you'll get a hard on and make a woman happy once more time in your life before you die. That's always what it's, uh, it's always centered on that. It's like this weird negative language. Are you tired of your wife looking at your limp noodle? <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. I, I'm just, because you know there are dudes out there who have the problem or who have that sort of thing going on, and they're, they're just miserable. They're just like, holy fuck, yeah, that's awful. Um, but I, I just get them, and I'm like, Jesus. And they have, they'll have they have, like, pictures of, like, 75-year-old men that are ripped with muscles, and they're like, you can be like this, too, and, and be just like when you were in high school. Again, like I said, when I get to 75, man, I don't, I don't want to be like I was in high school. I want to hide. I want to relax. 
I will have already exerted myself to whatever fucking extent I possibly could. Making it to 75 will be a finish line, believe me. And all I will need at 75 is the strength to, fr- to thrust my chest forward to break the tape at the finish line so I can collapse and die. That's all I will need at 75. Like I said, the back 25 here. We're in it. We're already, we're firmly in the back 25. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw you guys in on a recruiting uh, mission later. As soon as I talk about this gay dude who's killing people, but uh, before, uh, but first, let's talk about him. But I will tell you about this recruiting thing a little bit later, uh, because we had an interesting weekend, and uh, and I want to talk to you about it a little bit. Um, but first, I'm reading this story, and because I, I know if I don't finish this, you guys are gonna be mad. And this is the kind of story you won't Google. You know what I mean? It's not like anybody's gonna go. Well, Mike didn't finish talking about that gay guy who's killing people, so we should go ahead and Google that. Nope, that will definitely stick out in a search history at work or home. Um. Some dude, he's like a big Democratic donor, and he lives in West Hollywood, or he has an apartment in West Hollywood. And uh, he, it's uh, again from the vibe I got from what I read, he's not even he's not he's he's a gay dude who wasn't really even into sex. Like he wants he was getting young black men to come over to his house and pose in tight clothing, like tight underwear, in an aroused state. Now you're like, all right, whatever. Everybody's got their own fetish. I mean, I like stuff that you might not like. You might like stuff that I will not like for a second, but if you want me to do it, I'll do it, of course, because I'll do anything. Uh, Because I need love and sex all the time. Um, But yeah, whatever you got on the table, I'll discuss it. Whatever you like, I'm on board. I'm in. I'm I'm willing to indulge any fetishes you may have, ma'am. <clears throat> so please come to me and pony them up and I will be happy. I mean, if that might be one of them, ponying them up, I'll be happy to pony up for you. If that, if you got that fetish, let's pony it up. Uh, I don't know if I want that tail in my ass, but I mean, if that's what it works, that's what works. Um, you ever see those things? The fucking, uh, I don't know if it's a, I don't want to say it's bronies or whatever the fuck, but it's like, there's this whole genre of porn where girls wear horse tails in their ass. And I mean, the ass, like it's a, it's a butt plug with a horse tail attached to it. I think, I, don't, I haven't seen the dynamics. I've never watched anything get inserted. All I know is it's pictures of random women and they literally have bushy fucking pony, not ponytails, hair ponytails. I mean like out of their ass, they have like a pony, like a My Little Ponytail. And, uh, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, are you, are you thinking about banging a horse? Is that what it is? Cause you got a hot girl there and you made her wear a ponytail. Like, so you wish she was half horse. And also I get news for you. You've just, uh. You're just taking away like one third of your entrances. I mean, I, you know, you really want to fight for a position with a goddamn pony ass tail butt plug? No, you don't. Um, let, how, how do you get your tongue in there with the pony ass tail butt plug in there? I don't know. I kind of, and maybe, th- I, maybe that's the whole part of it. Maybe that's the challenge. Maybe they like that when you pull it out. I got no fucking idea. But apparently there's a whole bunch of dudes out there who love seeing a girl with a ponytail stuck in their ass. Um, and like I said, if that's something you're on board with, ma'am, I will indulge you. Whatever you need me to do for you, as long as you're, you know, like, uh, what is it? Good, uh, going in game. What the fuck is it? Triple G? Not Golovkin. That's what it is. You, you want to be like Sir Golovkin in the fucking ring. No, man, fucking isn't it Dan Savage's thing? It's like good giving in game or whatever the fuck. So that's what you got to do. If you're with a, if you're with a sex partner, you got to be like, what do you want? I'm in. Smothering? Let's do it. Uh, you want to do the training thing where you're drooling? All right, I'm in. Uh, I should shut up now. All right, so uh, all of that stuff is fine with me. I'm, that's my point. But what isn't fine with me? Like, I, I, so again, if you want me to pose in tight clothing, by the way, I would I would look terrible, and I don't have enough cock to pull that off in any sort of fetish realm. I don't think that works at all. Um, again, I, I'm I'm all mouth, as I've mentioned, from the neck up. If you want, you want me to put tight shorts around my mouth and then like breathe on it, and you'll see like fucking moisture form or whatever. That's fine if that does it for you, because that's my that's my weapon of choice. I mean, the rest of it works. And I can do whatever you need me to do with it. It's fine. Um, you know, like, you, you, like I said, I'm not lying. You're six by five. You know what you're getting. Six and a half by five on a good day. But uh, it hasn't been a good day recently. And it's been, I've been spiraling off. And this, we'll talk about it when we get here to the end. Um, but I'm a guy who, uh, uh, like, so, so I don't judge you and your fetishes. I don't judge you and the bullshit that you want to do. Like, if you want to have a guy come over to your house, you want to find him on the internet, you want him to pose in a bunch of fucking boxer shorts and stuff like that and tight clothes, I get that. I mean, I guess I could see where that would be a thing. Now, I, and again, I, in the article, it doesn't say whether this dude went on to continue to have sex with these dudes. Um, or at least that wasn't the, I, I guess that was, well, cause here's why, here's what happens. The guy gets them over there and they model a bunch of fucking, uh, tight gym clothes and running shorts and things like that. And, and they do it in an aroused state and he takes photos or whatever the fuck he does or he jerks off. I don't know when you're 63, like I said, again, as a, as a 63 year old man, it just, just get, just get a cigar, just put something else in your fucking mouth. All right. Um, 
<laughs> so, but here's the here's the bad thing. Because again, like I said, it's not a bad thing that you got a sexual proclivity to seeing guys in tight clothing and you want to see that kind of thing, or ladies in in half a bra. Because like, I mean, there's stuff I like. I mean, I like I like a thong. I mean, I, and I like uh, oh, I like a, a, a no panty thing. Oh man, I'm a fan of that. If you go fucking straight up commando and you take my hand, you slide it up under your skirt, and hey, guess what? There's nothing between us but air and opportunity and a finger. And I'm like, hell yeah, how the fuck are you? Let's do that. Um, I'm a fan. But, uh, but so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I got my own shit that I like. So I don't, I don't judge anybody else on the, on the fucking stuff that they like. Uh, however, here's the thing that we're crossed over from stuff this guy likes to stuff we should probably call the police over. Uh, apparently, first of all, so not only did this, he's again, a 63 year old white democratic high powered donor. There's photos of him with Hillary Clinton. There's photos of him with, uh, with, and of course people have, then they run on that and they're like, Oh, Hillary didn't even realize this pervert. Dude, I got news for you. you look at the photo with a guy. Uh, he's wearing like a plaid shirt and a bow tie. Probably a bad example. All right, that's a pervert. I probably shouldn't say that. Unless you're Paul F. Tompkins, that's not a look you're pulling off. Unless you're a Jesse Thorne with a put this on, you're not having that work for anybody. Uh, but this guy, he just, he looks like, he's standing next to Hillary Clinton and he just looks like uh, the sassy ventriloquist dummy. That's what he looks like. Just the fucking plaid shirt and the bow tie and a big smiley face that says, hey, I just gave Hillary a bunch of money so I can do whatever the fuck I want with a bunch of gay dudes in the future. And here's what he does with them. I know you're waiting for me to get to that part. He gets them to come to his house. He gets them to pose in like tight shorts and take their clothes off and pose with a fucking hard on or whatever they do. But then here's what he does. Uh, for, he wants to call them the N-word. Now, I don't, I mean, I guess we know what that's about. That's just a power trip or just him being a scumbag or, or what. I don't, I don't fucking know. Just a terrible, terrible person. That, you know what that might be? That might just be, hey, I'm rich. Can I pay you to humiliate you because I'm rich? Can I do whatever the fuck I want to do because I am rich? And some guys think that they're allowed to do that sort of thing. Uh, one of the guy and the guy that I read in the interview, he's just like, man, I'm not about any kind of fucking disrespect. So I told the guy, no, he can't fucking do that. Um, so the guy, but at least he asked that. Now he asked that. Here's the the other thing he wanted these dudes to do. These black escort dudes, these young uh, these young escort guys. He wanted them to uh, take dangerous amounts of methamphetamine smoke methamphetamine with him, and he wanted to inject them himself with the crystal meth. Uh, and GHB. Like, he would, they would go over there and he'd be on, he said he'd be, he'd say, I've been on a two-day bender, I haven't slept in two days, I'm taking GHB and meth, and, uh, and those might be the same thing, I have no fucking idea, I'm not a drug guy. But, and then he would want to inject them with the fucking drugs. And, and it turns out that, like, some of them would let him do that. They would allow him to fucking do it. The guy that they, I read the transcript of, he's like, uh, Man, I got another job. I, I'm a security guard somewhere. I work 12, 13 hour days. So I was beat. I fell asleep in this dude's apartment. He goes, I woke up to a prick in my arm. Uh, and that's not a euphemism. He literally felt a prick inside of his arm. Uh, a, a, a needle. He woke up and he saw it. His arm was fucking tied down. His arm was red. The dude ran. He got up. He untied his fucking self. He went over and there was a taser on the table. He grabbed one taser. The white guy grabbed another taser. And they faced off in like a taser, like almost like a... Uh, a Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker. That's probably a really bad analogy. Although even actually it's a great analogy. Uh, a, a big ass black dude and a fucking tiny ass white guy. That's probably what it was like. <laughs> Except they were naked. And one of them having a hard on in gym shorts. Imagine, all right, here we go. Imagine in Star Wars, if Luke was a 63 year old Luke Skywalker in a white tank top, and uh, he was fighting against a Darth Vader who was naked except for a hard-on and gym shorts. And they were holding the fucking lightsabers at one another. That's what went on in this Hollywood apartment. West Hollywood apartment. I don't want to malign Hollywood with this kind of activity. We know it's a clean area. They've cleaned it up. But in West Hollywood, it's anything goes, man. Literally, their city, their flag, their, their city symbol is a coin flip. That's what's happening on the fucking West Hollywood flag. Anything goes. Uh, so they fucking, sure enough, he said he pulled the taser on the dude. The other dude pulled the taser. And then that dude ran... And the white dude ran into the back of the apartment and hid while this guy took a, uh, he, he grabbed the white dude's phone and called himself an Uber and then went home and left. Uh, but then it turns out he went to the police department first to tell them what had happened, but he was, he had already taken the spike. So he's on meth. So he's trying to talk and they're just like, dude, you're tweaking. And he's like, I'm not tweaking. I'm telling you, this just happened. And he tried to explain and nobody would listen to him. This is why it's such a controversy because, uh, I guess it's well known in the fucking black escort community or the, even the escort community, the gay escort community, that this dude does this sort of thing. And just recently, uh, he had a black, he had a young black escort die in his apartment of a drug overdose. 
Well, when that happened, and that's when all these other dudes came forward and said, hey, this is a guy who likes to order guys off the internet and shoot them up himself, and then they fucking, you know, and then he has their way with them or whatever, and then they, they he pays them huge amounts of money. Um, so I, I guess my point here is what? Stay away from West Hollywood? Was there a point? I don't know. I was just, I just, I saw, I saw this story, and it's just been rattling on in my fucking brain because uh, nobody can get anybody to believe them. Because, again, these are young, poor guys who work in the sex industry and their escorts, and they're telling these stories, and everybody just, and because I guess this guy's friends with the mayor, Gil Garcetti, he's friends with fucking, yeah, he's friends with Hillary, and the, and so nobody will investigate, uh, that's, the mom of the kid who died is, they're on YouTube, they're, they had a GoFundMe, that's what this whole country is, man, at this point now, it's just rich people versus poor people, and the poor casualties just set up GoFundMes, that's the new, that's the fucking 21st century triage tent for a war, like, you remember in the in the old Civil War days and they'd have a triage tent and guys would just get in there and they'd be pulling out musket balls with fucking pliers and shit. Guys are just screaming. And that was all they could do was meatball surgery. Well, that's what a GoFundMe is. You just hope. I mean, at this point, any bad thing happens to you, you just throw up a fucking GoFundMe because you're poor and you hope that everybody comes and rallies around you and you got to have a good story. That's the How terrible is that? All of your medical care in this country is now predicated on having a good story. Now, that's good news for me. Because <laughs> I, I have, I got a million good stories. Uh, but if your story is, hey, I was a sex worker and I went to this dude's house and he uh, he killed me with methamphetamine and now we want to raise money for his fucking dungarees or whatever the fuck they're buying for his family. Um, and, and then they had like, look, I don't mean to make light of this fact. This kid is dead. And I'm reading his fucking journal. And in his journal from like months ago, he's like, ah, this guy, Ed Buck, that's the dude. That's the, by the way, that's the name of the dude, Ed Buck. Um who you might I, who I loved his work at Midnight Cowboy. I'm not going to lie to you. He was so great uh, because he was, I, you know, because Ed Buck was raped in a barn, not unlike Joe Buck. Uh, that happened, right? I'm not wrong. Like when I watched Midnight Cowboy, the, the message I took from it was like they, they came upon Joe Buck and his girlfriend and they gang raped his girlfriend and then they gang raped Joe Buck. That's why Joe Buck hated gay people so much later in the movie. Spoiler alert. I'm talking here. <laughs> I'm talking here. Uh, I just pounded on the microphone. That had, that could not have been good for your ears, and I do apologize for that happening. Um, <laughs> I'm talking here. That wasn't bad. Um, but yeah, but fucking right in Midnight Cowboy. So that's why Joe Buck, then he, he murders the fucking gay guy who wants to have sex with him, or who basically does have sex with him, because he's uh, he has a flashback to the part time when he got raped by gay dudes. Or not even by gay dudes, just power dudes, just like guys in a barn who raped his fiancée and then raped him. I don't know if his fiance. Look, I don't want to speak to Joe Buck's relationship with this woman. Uh, they seemed close, though. They were about to have sex in a barn when these guys burst in. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I can speak to Ed Buck's relationship with this poor kid who died, and it was not a good one. He, uh, he mounted him and then drilled him with a fucking spike in the arm and killed him with meth. And here's the craziest part. There's a fucking, like, a, a, a videotape. The, you know, the cops have the videotape, and there's a, a, a videotape from the apartment complex, like a security tape. And as the cops are there getting the body out of the apartment... Another kid shows up to come up to that guy's apartment. Another young black man. And I don't know if he's an escort or what the fuck he was, but I guess he tried to get in the cops like, nah, man, you got to take off. <laughs> and I got news for you, man. You got to either be one ballsy escort or you got to really need the money if you still go to the client's house when there's four cops outside and a morgue truck outside the fucking apartment complex. Jesus Christ. I mean, you got to really want that Ed Buck cock if you're going to fucking make your way up the stairs and go, hi, I'm here for my man, Ed. And they're like, well, hold on. We're taking up, uh, we're taking past you out of the bedroom now with a fucking needle in his arm. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just wait downstairs. No, why don't you move along, buddy? I don't know how badly you need three grand uh, or how badly you want to take the spike and get high, but you should, this is, I got to avoid that apartment. I got news for you. I don't even enter the complex. If I pull up and I, I know I'm an escort dude and there's fucking ambulances and cops and all sorts of bullshit outside, yeah, I'm sorry. You are not getting me in the goddamn door. It's not happening. I, you're going to have to jerk off that night, Ed. Yeah, I, I'll FaceTime you. If you want to Venmo me a little a small amount of cash, maybe half price, send me half my fee. <laughs> there you go, Ed. Have, Venmo me half my fee and I'll talk you through a fucking stroke session on FaceTime. But I am not coming into your apartment building with fucking four cops and a fucking coroner's truck. Jesus Christ. That's ballsy. Um, I don't even know why the fuck I'm telling you this story. Just because it was stuck in my head. It also, here's another reason why. Because the, the building, I'll just give you the fucking address because it's in the article. It was 1234 Laurel Avenue, right at Norton in West Hollywood. Uh, I delivered to that building. 
not now. I mean, but I delivered when I was uh, when I worked at Baby Blues. Um, I delivered meat. <laughs> there you go. Hey guys, I delivered a, I delivered a lot of meat to that building. Uh, no, I'd recognize the address immediately, and I was like, "Oh, you got to be." And then they, had, of course, the the facade, the outside of the building, and I'm like, "Fuck, we delivered there all the fucking time." Now I don't know if we went to apartment, whatever the fuck. Uh, I don't know if we went to gay dude's apartment, but I will tell you this: nothing. There's photos from inside his apartment, dudes. Again, this dude's like a fucking multimillionaire. He's donating money to Ed Governor Jerry Brown and everybody else, and Hillary Clinton, whomever. And uh, and one of the escorts took pictures inside the apartment because the escort, you know, he's doing a fucking fashion show. He's walking around with like tidy whities on and a fucking hard on, and here you go, check this out. But dude, this dude's apartment is just a fucking panic. I mean, it just it just looks like a Calvin Klein exploded because there's nothing but underwear and stuff all over the floor. It's not a clean, nice apartment. I'm sure he has like a clean, nice house somewhere, but this is his illicit drug and fucking escort dude den. So he doesn't bother to clean the fucking thing up. And here's another great thing. He's got like a fucking pile of, I'm sure he's just like, try this on, try this on. And he's snorting poppers and whatever the fuck he's got going on. You know, you know what he did? Actually, he's over there and he brought over fucking uh, Kevin Bacon in a powdered wig and Joe Pesci (laughs) and they're pitching each other's nipples and doing poppers and trying on underpants the whole time. That's what they're doing. Max needs to make some memes about those fellas. Hey, you want to stop? You know, Max, Max, start making an Ed Buck meme. Go ahead and take this guy out. Make some memes and solve this crime. Get done by the end of December. Put that guy in the fucking clink. Um, but sure enough, man, this dude is just his apartment is just foul. I mean, it's just fucking just covered in underwear. And I mean, you know, look, I just and again, I I'm terrible, so I have to extrapolate and think of everything. I'm like, well, there's no way he's washing these thousands of pairs of underwear. He just lets them lay around on the floor, and he goes, "You try that one on," because he's paying. So he's probably a, an arrogant fucking cocksucker. I saw Deadwood. Those guys made the women do a bunch of crazy shit and just yelled at him. Um, if you pay, you think you get you own the person. You can do it with them. I mean, fuck, he has to be called the N word for fuck's sake. So, so why the fuck would he not just think he could just make him try on all his underwear? And they're doing it. He's paying him like good money. So they're trying on fucking filthy underwear off the ground and just and standing there. I don't know what the fuck. And ordering pizza or talking. What, uh, what's the conversation like after that? There's so many lonely fucking people in the world. Jesus, what a mess. I mean, I know I'm, I can be, you know, I can get lonely, but I'm not lonely like that where I'm like, Jesus Christ, there's this gaping fucking hole and I need to fill. Oh, maybe there is. I just, I just felt with chocolate instead of anything else. Um... But yeah, man, that the fucking dude. I just, I the the apartment, and then here's the he's got a fucking American flag on display in his apartment, like a full size American flag. And honestly, in the picture I saw, it looked like it was upside down. So he's making a political statement about the current administration, even as he has rent boys try on fucking underpants. Good for you. Wait, wait, wait to not delineate. You want to cry? That's that's the Venn diagram right there. He's got my political beliefs and my sexual predilections, and right in the middle, there's Ed Buck just standing there with an upside down flag and a pair of tight underpants on, holding with a black guy on a chain. The fuck, man! What a horrible goddamn person. Um, but and again, the the big reason I know about this is because nobody's doing anything about it. They're just like, yeah, the guy died of an overdose. Case closed. It's like you don't think it's weird that this dude who's been arrested before for sex crimes, or maybe he hasn't, whatever the fuck, I don't know, but he's, he's just, he's a 24-year-old black guy in West Hollywood who dies in a fucking 65-year-old white guy's apartment that's covered in underwear, you don't, and he died of a drug overdose, you don't search the house, you don't look for a pipe, you don't test Ed to see if he's got anything in his system, Jesus, fuck, how do you just let these guys walk away, uh, you know, you cops are shooting everybody, shoot Ed Buck, for fuck's sake, that's a guy will go, yeah, okay, we're down with that, execute that motherfucker, he deserves it, he's killing dudes and spiking guys who don't want it for no reason, um, why am I, why do I even know that fucking guy's name? Why do I even know this story? This is what happens. Stay off the internet, folks. Just just read a book. That's and you know, and you wonder why I watch cooking shows and shows from the past. Because I don't give a fuck about what's going on in the world now. Because I turn I open my computer and there's a guy, his mom is crying because he died of an inadvertent meth overdose because he was injected by a 63-year-old fucking Hillary Clinton donor in a fucking apartment in West Hollywood. And nobody will do anything about it. And I'm reading that story, and then I fill my brain with it, and I'm like, ah, this is just fucking pollution. And so then you know what I'd have to do? i got to exercise it all over you guys. i got to vomit it into your ears. Aren't you happy you heard me? Aren't you happy I stepped up the plate and told you that bullshit? Holy fuck. I can't even, what am I going to name this fucking show? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, all right, so. Well, I, w- I will tell you these things also because uh, this is what I've been reading. I just read it yesterday uh, or today. Was it today? Yesterday? I don't fucking know. It's in, it's stuck in my brain is the point. Um, yesterday I went and saw my friend Maki. That's what I did. I went to our friend Maki. You know, she's a listener to the show. And I felt here's how terrible I fucking am. Um, well, actually, let's do this. We'll talk about Sunday. Sunday, uh, here's what I did Sunday. I didn't do a thing. I did nothing Sunday. I sat in my apartment. I sat under a blanket. I bought a nice blanket at Costco, which was fuzzy and nice. 
And uh, I think I talked about it last week. And I know I talked a little about Costco, but I don't know if I got all the way to the fucking end. But uh, whatever. I got a blanket that they, they said was 20 bucks, but I got it for 13 I should have bought like 10 of these motherfuckers because they're so fucking soft. And, uh, and so now I keep it in the living room. And I sat in my chair. I woke up because I drove late. I drove Uber. I mean, I drove Uber Friday, Saturday. But then Saturday night, I, I mean, I drove till 6 in the morning on Sunday. And the Bears were playing the Packers. So I was like, all right, I want to get up much of that Bears-Packers game. But uh, I, I got home at 6.30. I couldn't get to sleep until 7.30, and I fell asleep in the chair. And then I woke up, and it was like 12.15. I'm like, ah, fuck. I'm like, all right. And I grabbed the laptop because um, I wanted to watch Bears-Packers on a stream. <laughs> um, and I, the Bears got their ass beat. They didn't even get their ass beat. They got edged by a shittier team, a Packer team that was fucking awful and had a bunch of injuries. And I can't even talk about it. I'm, I'm like so... It's one of those things where you just see it. And you just, I, when I woke up, I actually grabbed my phone first and looked on Twitter. And uh, this guy this guy wrote, that, uh, now it's 12.15, mind you, so I know the game starts at 10. It's not over until like 1. But this dude, that I follow a bunch of Bears dudes on Twitter, and this guy wrote, this loss is completely on the coaching staff. What a nightmare. And I'm like, oh, my God, how bad is it? Because I, I didn't even expect him to lose. I expected him to win. But then they're losing. And another guy, another guy tweeted, he's just like, I have no fucking idea what the Bears are doing right now. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Because they had had a bye week. Here's the. All right, I apologize. A sports interlude. The Bears had a bye week. So everybody kept saying after the bye week they would turn Trubisky loose. He's the new the new kid, the biscuit, the fucking quarterback. So they're like, ah oh, man, they're just kind of biding their time to the bye week, and then they give him a ten full days of, of learning stuff, and then he's going to come out like a madman. And then they got a Packer team that's coming off a short week. They were on Monday Night Football. They're coming back on the road, and they got a fucking broken down offensive line. They got no fucking quarterback, and then their two top running backs go out in the game. I mean, it's you don't lose to that fucking team. You just don't. Oh, yeah, you do. If you're the fucking Bears, you do. So I put on the stream, they're down 16 to 7. I'm like, why the fuck are these guys panicking? I mean, it's just, it's one. And then I see right away, I see the Biscuit throw a fucking touchdown pass. He makes it 16 14. I'm like, perfect, here we go. And uh, then the Bears kick off on the first play. I'm like, because again, it's this shitty quarterback for the Packers. He's terrible. The previous week, I watched the Lions stomp their guts out in fucking Cheesetown, right up there in Wisconsin. They killed them. But then they got to come to Chicago and they fucking beat them. They beat the Bears. Why? Because the Bears are fucking awful. That's why. I can't even... It's that thing where I want to be like, well, there's hope, you know, and the Biscuit's going to be a great quarterback. And it's like, I can't even be that guy anymore. I'm just like, fire everybody. And I hate to be that fan. Nobody wants to be that fucking fan. But you wind up being that fucking fan when you keep watching ineptness wash over you every goddamn Sunday. So the Biscuit throws this touchdown to make it 16 to fucking 14. And I'm like, here we go. Packers get the ball. First pass is like a 21-yard pass to midfield. I'm like, is anybody going to cover that, dude? Then they run the ball for like six. Then they run the ball for two. So it's third and two. I'm like, all right, if you stop these fuckers here, you get the ball back, you turn it around. But I swear to God, I'm not joking. In my head, I go, well, the quarterback's going to run for this first down. I go, there's no doubt. He's going to fucking roll out, and then they'll guard, they'll cover dudes, and they won't contain him because they don't have a spy for him. And then he's going to fucking run for it. And sure enough, he fucking he goes around then. He runs for like 14 yards. And I'm like, now they're, and now they're in field goal range. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then two plays later, he throws a touchdown pass. I mean, it was that quick. It was an eight-play fucking drive. They carved the Bears up. I'm just staring at it. I'm like, what? What the fuck just happened? Like, why is this happening? Uh, and then, you know, the Bears come down, and they're marching, and I'm like, all right, and they kick a field goal to cut the lead, and uh, then they give a 42-yard pass on a third and eight. I mean, uh, what a – you don't care. What a mess. Uh, but the whole – in the larger picture, I'm laying under a blanket. I'm star- it's, like, nice out. It's like, it's, like, 60 degrees, so it's kind of a chill – and it's kind of dark. There's no sun. So it's that gloomy thing where you just want to sit in the apartment. And also, I like hiding. I've mentioned this to you. I've actually talked to Shannon about it every week. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. There's got to be an easier psychological explanation for it. She and I keep looking. Where she keep, she's always like, "Well, that's interesting that you know that you hide." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." And she's like, "Well, you're it's strange because you you know you're a public figure and a public person, a tiny bit, whatever the fuck." And I go, "Yeah, but I'm not really. I'm not a public figure or a public person." She goes, "But yeah, but you don't mind it." I go, "Well, no. I'll, I like going to do shows. I like talking to people. Um, but I I really love it when I'm in my house." and no one knows that I'm there and I can hear them outside. It's like I'm a spy. I love being a spy. You know, I when I would be in bed with Jill or I'm in bed with Randy, I'm just like, oh, let's be spies. Let's just listen. <laughs> let's just listen to what's going on outside. Um, whether it's in a hotel room and you listen to people in the hallway or whether it's here at in my house and I can hear people in the fucking courtyard, it's just I love being a spy. It's I, I've been that way since I was a fucking kid. When I was a little kid, I t- I've told this a million times, I would be in my bedroom and I would be in bed and I would hear cars drive by and I would love it because I'd be like, ha they don't know that I'm here. And they're off doing whatever they're doing, and I get to relax under like three warm blankets. Ha ha ha! It was just this weird feeling of comfort. <laughs> so foolish. So Sunday, I went in full spy mode. 
And I should say, by Sunday, I mean the last three weeks. I have been in fucking spy mode. Like, I've driven somewhat. I've been in Ubers. I've gone, like, I went to play poker at my buddy Chip's house on Thursday. And I tried to get out of that in my brain. I told you, I keep talking to myself out of going to do stuff. There was a fucking concert here. Remember I said I wouldn't do that anymore? I'm like, ah, man, you just got to get out of the house and do it. Like, you too. I made myself go. I was all proud of myself. Well, there was a fucking concert on Halloween night, and I didn't go. I kept telling myself I was going to go. The second they announced it, I'm, I'm going to go. Because I'm like, you can't miss magical, cool-ass stuff. And when they do cool-ass stuff, you should just fucking go. Make yourself get up and go. Don't be an old man. I've been fighting this fight for how long? When I went and saw Guns N' Roses in year three. Remember, I was going to stay home because I was alone because Pat canceled on me. And then I'm like, no, fuck you, go. And sure enough, I wind up chest bumping a guy and he goes down the fucking stairs and another guy hits me. I mean, it was, it was a great time. I had a really good show. Uh, but now... Like, you know, you know who I talked myself out of Tuesday? I'm going to tell you this just so you fucking shame me. Write me and shame me and tell me what the fuck. Uh, John Carpenter, who did the Halloween movies. You know, John Carpenter, who did fucking Escape from New York. John Carpenter, who did fucking uh, Ghosts of Mars. That's a bad example. But it, <laughs> regardless, John Carpenter's vampires. He's a, he's a fucking assault on Precinct 13. John fucking Carpenter. You know he did all the music for that, like the Halloween theme. Ding 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 ding. He he came up with that. That's his deal, right? Okay. He was doing a concert in Hollywood on Halloween. Halloween night. The guy who created Halloween was doing a music concert, and because he scored all of those movies, he scored Escape from New York, which I have. I have the soundtracks for these movies. They're fucking phenomenal. And, uh, and he's doing a concert and I'm going to go. I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm totally going to go. I can't wait to go. I'm going to go. And then that day I'm sitting in my house. And I'm like, man, you know, I don't need to go anywhere. It's fucking Halloween. Uh, and then I wound up recording for you guys. And then I'm like, well, I could put this off. Maybe I could do that. And then the fuck, and then I, one kid comes over and I have to give him a fucking one candy bar. And I'm like, you know, what? I should get out of here. Uh, I'm going to go to the concert. Like I even told Max, I go, Hey, I think I'm going to go to this concert tonight. And then I just didn't. I sat in the fucking house. And, and, and I'm so furious at myself. I'm so mad because, like I said, you don't waste magic. You don't fucking stop doing things. You need to go out and do life. You have to make it work. But for the last three weeks, I haven't left. And here's why. Because my trainer, John, you know, usually I've been going to the gym three times a week. And I lift, uh, as we all know. Because, you know, how much you bench. I'll tell you. Grab my arm. You'll see. But, uh, but three weeks ago, John was going to Fiji. And he went to Fiji for two weeks. And I'm like, all right. Well, he's like, I expect you to fucking keep it up. And I'm like, oh, of course I will. Well, all I thought in my head was, I'm like, ah, tears two weeks, I don't have to fucking do a goddamn thing. Because, you know, the times I did have to get out was because John was going to be there and I was going to meet him. I made sure I did that because there was somebody there that I owed something to. There was somebody there who I had to go and hang out with. There was somebody I had to be in the room with. So that made sure I went. So I would always go lift. It wasn't even about me. And, and I discovered this about myself in therapy, too. I don't, I don't care about me. You know, I, I wanted to, I want to take care of other people. I want to make sure things are good for other people, but I don't, I don't care about me. We've talked about this before. It's a prevailing theme on the goddamn show. So for those two weeks, John was in Fiji. I'm like, all right, well, fuck it. I didn't do anything. You know what I did? Honestly, I fucking ate like an asshole and I ate fucking candy and I hid my goddamn house. I drove occasionally. Uh, I went to play poker last week, but uh, the two weeks he was gone. Well, then last week doesn't even count because here's why. He was gone for two fucking weeks. And then the third week he gets back into town. He's sick. He caught some kind of fucking jungleness in his in his lungs. He had some sort of from just from flying and people coughing. You know how the fuck that is. And you get on a plane. You hear two people cough. You go, I'm dead. I'm fucking finished. Well, that's what happened to him. He got sick. So then he was sick for that week. So he's gone for two weeks and then sick for a week. So I had three weeks off. And again, you know what I did in those three weeks? Not a fucking thing. I sat in my house under the blanket. I went to Costco last week. And again, those are triumphs to me. I check the mail and I think I'm done for the day. It's the dumbest fucking thing in the world. I'm trying to solve it in therapy and I can't. Um, I can, but I can't. I'm trying to get a handle on it. I have it. I know it. I just got to fix it. And that's what keeps, Shannon keeps going. We got to figure out why that impediment is there for you. I'm like, I don't know. Because I never had a work ethic or discipline as a kid. So now I don't have it now as an adult. It's terrible. And it just gets worse the older you get. So... And also, I mean, that, that, you know what else gets the worse the older you get? Like your weight. Like I remember I lost all the weight. I was feeling good and I was fighting and I was feeling really good about myself and I was enjoying it. And, I, I, and this is in 2013. And I'm not ashamed to say so. I did that for Jill. Like when I did it, I did it because I wanted to be the best person I could be for her. I didn't give a fuck about me. I was like, fuck Mike, I don't care. But I was so thrilled to have somebody who was there and I wanted to be that for her. And I was feeling myself and I was into it and I loved it. And I made, so that was why I dedicated and cared. Uh, and then I fucking backslid. I'm like, nah, you know, whatever. Cause when it, I, for whatever fucking reason, the point is now it's, it's, I'm almost back at square fucking one and I hate it. And you guys are tired of hearing it. You've been with me for 10 fucking years. How many times were you booted this? So here's what I'm telling you. Sunday was rock bottom night. 
That's what I called it. Because I sat there and I ate I ate three fucking candy bars while I watched football and surfed the web and read some stuff and watched more football and then watched cooking shows. And I, I didn't even eat, like, food, like, no dinner. I just happened to have three fucking candy bars because I was going in to Walgreens every day and buying four. I'd buy four, even if I had two left from the previous day, because then I just, I'd always have a supply. I was always able to reach for it. It was always like having fucking heroin. Like, I always had it to get a shot. And, uh, you, you know, you, this is, oh, man, I shouldn't even confess this shit to you, but I'm gonna, this is, this is how terrible it got. Uh, I would sleep in the chair. Okay. Now I have a bed now and I, you know, I, I like sleeping in my bed. It's great. But when you drive so late, you'll wind up being all fucking wiped out or you're watching TV. I'm like, ah, I'm being lazy. I'll just turn the TV off and I'll just, I'll close my eyes for a second. And then I wake up five hours later in the fucking chair. Uh, but this is also truthful. I would do it because I don't have bedside tables in my bedroom. I just have my bed. So, you know, I got... I don't, I don't have a bedroom set. I got a hutch where my fucking clothes are. I got a cocktail bench and then I got my bed, but there's no, I have to buy tables for either side of the bed. Um, so my phone is in the bed with me. You know what I mean? When I set the alarm or I throw it on the floor when it's charging, it's just, it's a hassle, but it also means I can't have anything like a book or whatever in the fucking bedroom. And by a book, I don't mean a book. (laughs) Um, I'll sleep in the living room next to the table because the table has candy bars on it. And I'm not fucking kidding you. I will like sleep and then I'll wake up in like a couple hours. I will literally reach over and just put chocolate in my mouth and, uh, and drink water because I love, I just, I, it's like this incredible indulgence. It's, it's this reward, this weird, again, adulthood, childhood, all mixed up into one. I can do whatever the fuck I want. So if I want to wake up and out of a dead sleep and eat chocolate and drink water and just, and just lay there, I can, I don't have to move. I'm warm, toasty, fucking warm. And, uh, and I'm eating and I just put a piece of chocolate in my mouth and I, it's gotten so bad. And this is totally true. This happened. I don't know if I mentioned it on the show or not. Um, I fucking fell asleep with chocolate in my mouth. <laughs> I picked up a square, like a big square of chocolate. I put it in my mouth and I was like, what I, cause it's like, I, I think I started to chew it or it started to melt or whatever. And I just, I literally fell asleep. And when I woke up, uh, it was, it was all, it was in my, it was like my teeth. Like when I smiled, they were, it was like, it was brown. I mean, it was like, I, it was like, I, I had just eaten a massive fucking chocolate bar and never swallowed it. I mean, it just looks so fucking horrifying. Uh, and, and, but I, but I loved the indulgence of just reaching over and getting chocolate and putting it in my mouth. So I fucking Sunday, I'm just laying there. I'm, I'm under a fucking cover. Uh, I didn't take a shower. I haven't shaved in a couple of days. And I, I'm eating chocolate. I eat all, you know, there's three chocolate bars. I eat two and a half. And, uh, and that's fucking 14, you know, that's 17 ounces of chocolate. So you figure that's, I ate a pound of chocolate just sitting in my fucking chair. Jesus Christ. Now that I put it like that, I did. I ate a fucking pound of chocolate still had leftover. And the only times I would get up is if I had to use the restroom or I had to grab more ice water, uh, because that's what I did. I sat there and ate chocolate and, and drank water. Fucking miserable. Uh, and texting with people and poor Randy. She's like, Hey, what are you doing? What's going on? I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm getting ready to do stuff. And she's like, all right, that's cool. <laughs> hope you're, hope you're having a good Sunday watching your footy. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of am. It's all right. I don't have any pants on yet. It's fucking six o'clock at night. Uh, it's uh, awful. So I, I decided, you know what? I got up finally and I walked into the restroom and I was going to take a shower and I looked at myself in the mirror and, uh, I'm fat. I mean, I just got fat again. And I mean, I got f- a fleshy face. And when I don't shave it, you can really see it. Uh, my cheekbones are disappearing. My fucking hair is, was all fucking stacked up on top of itself from, from not, you know, just, I just, I was a fucking mess. I just looked like a fat fucking Oscar Madison, Jack Klugman, fucking fat hobo. Like I, I looked like the, the bad friend in any teen comedy, the one they'd make fun of who they'd catch eating chocolate bars, hiding in a closet. I mean, it just was fucking disgusting to me. Uh, I, you know what? And cause normally, like I said, I, I, an orgy of chocolate to me is, is such a fucking reward. It's so amazing to me. I'm like, Oh my God, I can do whatever I want. Look at me. I'm grown up. I can do this, which is fucking stupid. Okay. But I do it and I've done it. But, uh, but I think back to the times when I was happiest and that's when, you know, when I first met Jill and I was fighting and I was, I was going to, I was exercising and I was lifting, you know, I, even before that, when I was with Karen and I was exercising, I lost all the weight. I lost 235 pounds. I was fucking doing MMA and jujitsu for a year and fucking rolling with Richard. And, and I was, and people would stop in the gym to watch me. I was a fucking animal. And I'm like, yeah, I loved that. I fucking loved that. And then when I got back, when I started with John and that's when I, when I met, I met John basically when I met Jill, I went in and started to fucking go, you know what? I'm fixing this man. It was July of 2013. 
and uh, and I, I knew Jill already, but I mean, I just I was like, let's fucking do this, man. And I, I I was doing wall sits and running stairs and fucking and doing cardio and fighting and hitting the heavy bag and then lifting with him, and it was fantastic. I love those feelings, I do. But I also like yeah, this will sound so fucking terrible. I like having somebody to go, good job. Isn't that fucking awful? Isn't that really fucking awful to have somebody? I, I want somebody to look at me and go, yeah, man, good for you. Good job today. Uh, because it makes me want to keep doing it. Because if I'm only doing it for me, there's no point in doing it. If I'm only doing it because I want to do it or because I think I should, then what the fuck is that? That's just grown up garbage. But if there's a reward, and that's kind of what I've done with this show a little bit, where I've turned this into a thing where, well, you know, I, I, that's why I want to hear from people tell me it's good because I want, that makes me want to keep doing it. And I know that sounds fucking stupid. It puts a lot of pressure on you guys. But that's how it is. Like when I started, if you remember like six months ago, I said, fuck this, we're rebooting. And I lost 20 pounds in a month. Uh, I lost 20 pounds and I was, it's because I was doing cardio. I was back doing that. I was running, I was lifting. But what I was doing is I was sending my photos after cardio, I was sending them to John. And, uh, and I, I've probably talked about this on the show where I was like, why would a fucking 28 year old guy want to get photos of sweaty me? But it was, I needed it. I needed somebody to send them to. And at the time I had nobody, you know, I mean, I, I had just come out of, uh, uh, you know, a relationship and there was nobody to go get positive reinforcement from, or at least, or at least, you know, look for it. And, uh, and so I would, I made John my guy, you know, and I've done that with him a few times where I'm like, all right, man, I, you know, this is happening. This is happening. Um, and I started sending him stuff and he'd be like, good job. And I'd send him the time and he'd be like, all right, man, keep at it. You know, da, da. but then after like a week or two, or no, it was two weeks after two weeks, he just stopped returning my texts because he's busy. You know why? He's got a life. He's got other clients. He's got other shit going on. He doesn't need to be the guy who's fucking telling me what I, that I'm, I'm a good boy. That's not his fucking job. I pay him to help me lift and shit like that. And he wants to be a bigger part of my life. He was like, he's like, I'll go shopping with you to Trader Joe's. We'll fucking buy the right food. He gave me a menu plan. He gave me all this shit and I'm on board with it. But at the same time, I need that weird instant gratification or else I'm like, uh, if I didn't do that, and it's probably a part of living the examined life. You know, I do this show and I'd like to hear that I've done well. I like to hear that you guys think I'm funny. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's some insecurity at my fucking core, but I, I need, I, I do fuck need needs the word. I do. I need someone to go. Yeah, man. Great job. Awesome. You fucking killed it. Uh, even in the gym, like when I leave, I'll look at him. I go, did I good today? Did I do good today? And he's like, yeah, man, you did good. I go, I know I talked a lot. He goes, he didn't talk too much and we got everything done. We wanted to do. You did great. And that's all I, I, that's fine. Cause then if I feel like I'm making the effort and he notices the effort, then that's the, then the effort's worth it. That's why I won't work out on myself. Cause, cause I'm up, I'm by myself. Who the fuck cares? Nobody wants, it's just, but I didn't have that mindset before, but that's because I was working out cause I wanted to look good for Jill or I wanted, I, I wanted to feel good for Karen. I wanted to do those things for somebody. Um, and I already told Randy, I'm like, Hey, I might send you photos of me from off the treadmill. <laughs> I'm like so stupid. And she's just like, okay. I'm sure she's like, why the fuck would you do that? But I mean, she's like, absolutely, whatever you need. And, and she's really nice about it. And that's great. Um, so I guess I'm, 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 I called Sunday rock bottom night. Cause I had half a candy bar left and I'm like, well, look, you could just throw this away or you could just fucking, in, you could steer into the skid here and say, fuck this. Let's just fucking make tonight the final horrible night. And that's what I did. Uh, I did a, I did a true fat guy thing. I went on, I, I had, like I said, half a candy bar left and, uh, so I had half a Hershey bar left and I had a Snickers bar hiding in my house because I was in line. This again, this is from that week. I was in line and they had, it was Snickers bars were two for a dollar. I don't even like Snickers bars. I like those Snickers minis, but to eat a whole Snickers bar is just, it's just a chore. Like, cause it's got nuts and nougat. And all, I don't know. You got way too many fucking ingredients. I just want a chocolate bar. It's all I fucking want. It's like when Charlie goes into the fucking uh, chocolate, well, not even the chocolate factory, into the candy store. And he just wants a regular chocolate bar. And the guy's like, don't you want something with malt in it or a malt ball or a fucking whatever the gummy bears and shit? And he's like, no, man, I just want a regular chocolate bar, a Wonka bar. Uh, that's all I want. Hershey bar. I just want straight fucking chocolate. I don't need your nougat. I don't need your fucking peanuts. I don't need your caramel. I don't need your Butterfinger crisp. I don't need your peanut butter in there. I just want a fucking chocolate bar. Uh, so <laughs> you don't care. You know what? You do care. I apologize. Again, I said I wasn't going to do that anymore. I've said that many, many times. But that's just me telling myself I don't care because I think it's foolish to talk about candy bars and their ingredients. So uh, I had a Snickers bar and half a Hershey's bar. And then I'm like, you know, oh, fuck this. Because I had other healthy food in the house. I got tuna. I got oatmeal. I got fucking uh, yogurt. I'm like, nah, fuck all that. We're, we're, we're fucking embracing this. We're going over the fucking cliff tonight. It's rock bottom night. Cause it all changes tomorrow. And uh, what I did is I went out and I went to fat burger and I got a fat burger with two fried eggs on it and, uh, and grilled onions and, and <laughs> tomato and, and fucking onion rings. Uh, 
and uh, a side of onion rings. And then I left there and I went to Five Guys and I got a fucking, and it was closing time at Five Guys. And they know me. Like when I walk in, they know what I fucking want. That's how terrible it's gotten. Because I will tell you this, when I lost all the weight initially, when I got the fucking surgery and I was with Karen, I said, no more fast food, no more candy, no more soda. That's it for sure. Exercise and cardio will come and you'll make those happen. But you have to avoid fast food. You have to avoid chocolate. You have to avoid soda. Those are promises I made to myself. And I did them for a very long time, but then I'd, I'd have like one soda every four months, which wasn't a bad thing. Uh, you know, and then I might stop, you know, when I started to kick in the fast food again, when I started doing the Uber, because it would be late at night and you know me, my eating schedule was so weird. Like I would sleep until like three in the afternoon because I'd driven until seven in the morning. So I'd sleep until like one or two in the afternoon. I'd get up, I'd shower. And instead of eating a breakfast here, I'd leave and I'd go driving and I'd have chocolate bars at the ready. Cause I was bored in the fucking car. And then I'd stop late at night and I'd get fucking Jack in the box or whatever. And, and, and eat just fucking food or big fried chicken sandwiches, whatever the fuck I would eat. It was fast food. It was not good for you. It was not healthy, but those were the things I had sworn off were soda fucking chocolate and fast food. And they were back with a vengeance. I mean, again, I'm going to five guys. They know me. Hey, Mike, I knew Gary at five guys. How fucking terrible is that? That's just straight up fat guy who hides in the internet and has no friends. Hi, Gary at five guys. Is my order ready? It is Mike. Here are your burnt fries. What a fucking tool bag. But that's who I became. So I was going there like certainly once a week, maybe twice a week, and I'd get there at closing time. And then again, here's how a fat guy's brain works. They like me. So I would walk in there and they would see me and they, it was because it was closing time. I would just order like a regular fry and they would basically make the rest of the fries in the two baskets and dump them in a giant bag and hand them to me. Because they were saying, yeah, we're just going to throw the shit away anyway. Now, how gross is that? I'm getting the food they were just going to throw away anyway, but I'm willing to eat it. Now, look, it wasn't like like cooked fries sitting there. No, they were raw fries because that's what they do. They slice potatoes raw. But he's like, yeah, we had to cook them or just throw them out. So we're just going to cook them and give them to you. And they would give me giant fucking sacks of fries. And I couldn't eat them. But I would get home and I would have this weird challenge where I'm like, I would eat them in the car all the way home before I even opened my hamburger. Then I'd get home and I'd eat fucking burger and fries like an idiot. Oh, Christ. So, so Sunday, I walked in and they were very nice. And they're like, well, we're closing. We're almost out of stuff, but we do have fries. And, uh, and they made me a giant fry and I brought it home. And I, I, and I had a cherry Coke because cherry Coke is absolutely my soda weakness. And I, so I had a fucking cherry Coke and I actually took a picture of it and sent it to Randy. I go rock bottom night. And she's like, what do you mean? And I go, that's it. It's ending. I go, I'm, I'm just, I can't anymore. I need to fucking grab the reins on my life. I can't do it. Uh, and also because I was going back to the gym on Monday with John. That's why I declared Sunday rock bottom night. I go, it's fucking, we're doing it. We're sitting here and we're going to, like I said, we're going to steer into the skid and do every fucking terrible thing we can. And, uh, I ate the Snickers bar and here's the thing. I had, uh, I had kettle corn in my, my pantry. I ate that, uh, in a cabinet, I should say, um, anything that was garbage that I wouldn't be eating after that point on, I said, I got to clear it out. I got to eat it. I ate the fucking Snickers bar. There was a fucking fortune cookie here from Chinese food that Randy and I had a couple of weeks ago. I wolfed that down. Uh, there was like a fucking rolled up baklava from a fucking Mediterranean food order that I had made. I ate that. It was just like I went through the house with a magnifying glass and anything with sugar in it, I was going to fucking inhale. And I ate this big bag of fucking kettle corn. I ate a Snickers bar. I ate a, And I ate this fat burger with two fucking eggs on it and all these fucking french fries. And, and here's how it was too. Uh... I, I, and I, so I ate that fucking cheeseburger that uh, it was extra cheese, extra cheese, ketchup, mayo, tomato, fucking grilled onion, raw onion, <laughs> two fried eggs and onion rings on the burger as well as sets. So yeah, that's right. Three different kinds of onion and then a side of onion rings and then the fries and I'm fucking burying them. And, uh, I, wa- I, I just fucking, I ate it. And then an hour later I just fucking went and, and lost it all three fingers down the throat and let's do this. Let's fucking make it happen. Let's throw up like the good old days and fucking start over. Let's reboot. It's like, that's what we did. We actually rebooted by booting. We reboot booted, uh, on rock bottom night. And then I, cause I had to clean that out cause I needed room for my candy bars. So that's what I did. I, and I ate the rest of the fries. Even after fucking launching, I ate the rest of the fries cold. Just because I made myself do it. It was like that thing. I was private pile. That's who the fuck I was. They're paying for it. You eat it. And I sat there and ate cold French fries while the rest of the fucking platoon did push-ups. Fucking awful. So I'm just waiting for a fucking blanket party with soaps to happen to me sometime in the night. I don't know who the fuck will do it, but someone will. Uh, five guys. That's who will do it. Five guys. They're mad I booted their food. Uh, they're mad I booted their food. Gary and four other guys. The five guys will come in and have a blanket party with soap to beat the fuck out of me for spitting out their chow. ha <laughs> ha.
Uh, but I ate cold fries and a Snickers bar and the, the other half of a Hershey bar and then the fucking whole bag of kettle corn. I'm just eating it miserably. No, no joy. No joy in any of it. Just pounded it. Because I knew Monday was the, the, the reboot, the start over. And, uh, and so Monday I was going to, uh, my friend Maki's house. As I mentioned, I went to go visit Maki and, uh, after rock bottom night, I got up and I went to the gym. I felt great. And I looked at him, I go, look, it's been three weeks, man. My shoulders are fucked. Let's build me up from scratch. And we did, we fucking, we hammered chest and shoulders and we, we killed it. We did really well, did some bench. Uh, and I felt good. And I sat with him and I looked at him, I go, look, this is it. Last night was rock bottom night. I go, we're, we're, we're moving forward and making this work. He's like, all right, you got to do your cardio. You got to do your stuff. I go, I will, I will, I will. We're in this Wednesday, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, I said, I'm flying to Denver on Thursday. I said, I'll walk a little bit when I'm in Denver. I'll do what I can to stay active. I go, but the more important thing is I'll control the diet. I won't do anything stupid. He's like, you gotta, you have to. I go, I know. I go, but I need you on this. And he's like, of course, I'm here. Fuck, I'm here. Um, so we lifted and then uh, I went down uh, went and saw Shannon, talked to her about rock bottom night. And then I went out to see Maki. And it's funny, when I saw Maki last time was a couple of months ago and I had promised her some pastries from a joint called Porto's here. It's a Cuban bakery. And when I had talked to her the last time, uh, I said, hey, you need anything? She's like, no. And then I got to her place. She goes, oh, you know, the only thing I would want is there's a place called Porto's, but I know it's too far from your house. It's in like, uh, it's in Culver City or wherever. And I, But they have pastries that I used to get. And I go, there's a Porto's right by my fucking house. She's like, really? I go, yeah. I go, it's like, it's two miles up the street. She goes, oh my God, next time you come, I want Porto's. So then she wrote me back on Sunday, you know, on rock bottom night. And she's like, hey, are we still on for tomorrow? And I said, absolutely. And she goes, okay, so you and Portos will be here. And I was like, oh, yeah, Portos. Ha ha. Um, so I went out. I bought a bunch of cheese rolls, a bunch of guava cheese rolls, a bunch of caramel kisses, raspberry kisses, fucking a pineapple Danish, a pear Danish. I bought a bunch of shit. I just, and just started piling it in boxes for Maki and her family. And uh, I got to Maki's house, and she's like, I got to have a cheese roll. She goes, you want one? I said, no. I didn't eat it. I didn't eat one fucking crumb of the Portos. And, uh, and hey, I'm not bragging, but I mean, it was a good start because I mean, it was, I mean, there was $30 worth of pastry staring me in the fucking face and I just fucking said, nah, that's okay. I'll avoid it. <laughs> uh, and then she and I went to lunch. We went to smash burger and I mean, smash burger counts as fast food, I guess. But I, I had said to her, I didn't want to eat, but then she was eating and I felt like a dick bag for not eating with her and they didn't have like a chicken sandwich thing. So I bought, you know, I did what I did. The rules were if I had to eat fast food, there was a way I had to do it. So what I did was I got a, I got an avocado bacon burger. Uh, I know you're going to hear like, oh, whatever. But, uh, but I only ate the whole patty of hamburger. I picked off the bacon. I ate the avocado. Um, and then I bought, you're going to laugh. I bought onion rings and I bought tater tots, but I only ate two tater tots. And I only ate like three, three, a few things of the onion rings. I grazed. And then I threw all of it away. Now, is that a waste of money? It is. But it was better for my sanity to fucking just to get it and just look at it. Cause this is what I used to do in the old days. Like I said, when I was, you can't, cause that's another thing. You can't put yourself in fucking jail. You can't be like, never again. You're going to only eat, you know, packets of French onion soup and, and that, and that cayenne pepper diet. And I mean, all that shit's fucked. What you have to do is just get a handle on yourself, exercise like a motherfucker and change your diet. So by not eating the pastries and stuff, like I said, we went to lunch and I ate a hamburgers. I, in my head, I'm like, well, hamburgers, protein, I can deal with that. And, uh, and then that night for dinner, I went and got trout with a fatouche salad. I ate that. Uh, today I had a couple of pieces of chicken, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm feeling, you know, whatever. It's all, it's all beginning. My point is, you know, I said I had gotten a Fitbit. And I threw it out there to people. I was like, hey, man, if you guys want to join me on a Fitbit, let's do it. And a few of you did say, hey, yeah, they, you requested me as a friend on Fitbit. Well, I'll be honest with you. I stopped using the fucking Fitbit. Not because I was using it heavily when I lost all that weight in the beginning. But then, uh, you know, you got to really enter a ton of shit on there. And then it's not intuitive. So I would start putting in stuff like from a place and it, I would have to constantly spell out every ingredient and everything and add it up. And I, and then it stopped syncing with my old laptop. It was just a fucking mess. So I, the Fitbit sits here and it doesn't get used. So part of me is like, well, I want to buy an Apple watch now and try to use that instead. But then part of me is like, you've got a perfectly good Fitbit here, man. A Fitbit blaze. When it fucked it, you start with that. So here it is. I'm throwing it out to you guys after rock bottom night. Uh, we're moving forward with workouts. And also I would tell you this, the thing I hate about the Fitbit is I would go fucking work out and it would say, we'd re we recognize that you did 22 minutes of canoeing today. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I lifted weights for a fucking hour and 20 minutes. Oh, it seemed like you were in a, in a rowboat for an hour. It's like, no, I fucking wasn't. What the fuck? So then it, it seemed like it wasn't, like I said, intuitive. It wasn't manually putting in the things that well, I had to manually put in those things and tell it what I did as a workout. And I feel if I'm manually telling it, then what the fuck good is it? I can write that shit down on a legal pad. Fuck. It's not really keeping track, but I'll give it another day in court. And I will ask all of you to step up and join me. 
Who wants to join me, damn it? And also, I'll throw this out there. Who out there wants to get texted photos of me coming off of a treadmill? Who wants to be my support group? Who wants to be the Mike Schmidt rally group? Who wants to be the ones who go, get a boy? We'll call it Attaboy with Mike Schmidt. We'll make a Facebook group and everything. And I just, I'll have to post photos in there of my workouts. And you'll be like, yay, and everybody will clap. I'm your child is my point. No longer am I your friend. No longer am I your internet chum. I'm not your internet child. And you got to check up on me. You got to constantly come in and make sure I'm getting enough sleep. You got to see that I'm getting to the gym and working out. You got to make sure that I'm taking care of myself with my diet. I'm, I'm handing my life over to you people is what I'm doing. I'm telling you, just fucking take me in. Just go ahead and supervise me and make sure I'm okay. Because I'm 50. I got 13 more years before I start sending out for black escorts and trying to give them the spike. You got to take care of me before that happens. I'm on a slippery slope. It starts with Hershey bars in the middle of the night. And then the next thing you know, I'm injecting meth into some guy's fucking jugular vein and seeing how many times he can spin around before I catch him and land him on a pile of goddamn underpants. And I'll tell you what, certainly that makes for a better show. I, I, I would imagine a lot of you out there is like, well, Mike, if you start eating fucking wheatgrass and bran and shit like that, you're not going to have anything to fucking talk about. How much more interesting is it if you start killing guys named Jamal with meth as you're making them pose in tight gym shorts? Yeah, maybe that's a better podcast. But fuck you people for wanting me to go down in flames like that. I'm demanding that you step up. That's right. This show's been free for eight fucking years. And that's a lie. Ten years. Holy Jesus. I can't even remember how many years I've been doing this shit. This show's been free for ten years. It's time to pay the check. Now, all of you people on Patreon and everybody over has sent me anything, I, then I, you've paid the check. So you guys are off the hook. But everybody else, Jesus Christ, step up, man. Be there for me. Let me send you photos of me sweaty from a treadmill. Boy, this thing is breaking bad. Honestly, because now I think about it, I've done this in the past, right? Haven't I reached out to you guys and been like, yeah, we're all going to do this together. I think I think actually year four, year five, the first show was about how fucked things had gotten and we were turning it around. <laughs> and here we are in year 10 doing the same fucking thing. Now, look, definition of insanity is trying to do the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So a lot of you out there are like, this is insane, Mike. You've tried before and it didn't work, but it did. That's the thing. It did work. It did. It took. I've lost over 100 pounds 12 times in my life. Uh, one time I lost 238 pounds. How crazy is that? That's a goddamn NFL linebacker. Well, that's a light linebacker. That's a goddamn NFL running back. Uh, tight end? I don't know. Fuck. I don't know the median weight for all these fucking dudes. But the point is, man, uh, I, I've done this before. It just hasn't taken. So I, what I need to do is I look, I'm fixing my head on my end. Your job is to keep telling me to do it, to keep going at it, boy. You guys got to be like the, the, the Kristen Cruz. In a, uh, I don't want to say, well, I'm, I'm trying to fuck her, not say her, whatever, who cares? Yeah, you're like fucking KC up in Portland. And Rich Galvin, who fucking ran me to the end of that goddamn warrior dash. And everybody else who fucking, uh, and by the way, Rich Galvin, out of my life completely. See, that's what happens. You back me up, you roll with me, and then fucking something happens where I say the wrong thing and you fucking bail. I get that, okay? I understand. But I'm asking you to stand with me. And sit with me and hold my feet down while I do sit-ups. Man, that's wrong. I got a chair or a couch that can handle that business. I haven't done a sit-up in forever. I do modern exercise, folks. Fuck you telling me to do fucking sit-ups and burpees and hi yah yas That's not happening. I'm going to fucking get out there and lift some goddamn weights. Oh, right now, if you can see me, I'm flexing it. Fuck yeah. You can hear that's the flex voice. Uh, I've done this before. I don't know how many times fucking David has done artwork about me throwing up or me fucking jumping off a, a chair or me, me thinking I'm like my favorite, one of my favorite pictures of all time. One of my favorite things of artwork. He did half of a strong me and half of a diabetes me. Like I was made out of sausages and candy with no foot. It was fucking gorgeous. And I remember we're talking to him about it when we came up with that artwork. It was just genius. And so I, I know that this has happened before. And and I look, I'm shocked that a lot of you are still here after 10 years. I, and not because I'm bad at this. I think I'm really good. But I think that when you listen, you would be just like, ah, fuck, it's that same stuff again where he's like kind of rallying the troops. And eventually you'll we'll have to hear the show where he's all sad because he didn't fucking do it. I mean, fuck, I had the sad cast the first year where I had the fucking thing about being sad and losing weight. And that was, of course, remember, that was the show that got reviewed by somebody. Look at me walking down memory lane and walking slowly. But at least I'm walking. <laughs> That's right. If I'm walking down memory lane, at least I'm doing some fucking cardio. Correct. Not correct, but so what? I need you. I need you. I'm Uncle Sam in the shit out of this thing, and I'm pointing right at you. I need you to be there and and grab me by the reins, because I can't do it myself. Yes, I can. I talk to Shannon every week, and I'm like, look, I know this. I can do this. And I'm gradually making adjustments. But look, man, I you know I got fried up in my personal life. My head got my, got my dick knocked in the dirt, and I was like sad. I'm still sad. I'll wake up sometimes, and I'm sad, or I'm just sitting in the house, and I'm fucking sad. And it's like that. that's just the way it goes. That's life. That's how it works. Everybody's sad, and everybody moves on. Everybody jumps up and does a, a jumping jack, and they're happy. Because that's the thing. I was happy when I would walk. I told you. 
when I would hit the treadmill, when I would lift with John and, uh, and we were at LA fitness and we would, we would lift for over an hour. And then he would say, you know, bust out some cardio because there's no cardio at the new gym. It's just this fucking hole in the wall gym. And he, he pays to run, uh, his, his training out of there. Uh, but I, I would I would run stairs with him and I would do wall sits and I'd do all sorts of weird shit. But I also lift because I loved lifting and I'd hit the heavy bag. And then he'd go, all right, do some cardio. So I'd just fucking hop in the treadmill. I'd do three miles after training with him. And just that feeling of going up there and, and, and you know, walking some at first and then actually fucking running. I, I actually, I, when, I, when I was running three miles without stopping, without walking, without, I mean, you know, running with the treadmill because like, the speed was going up and forth. I, I, I can't explain to you how good it felt. I hated it because I was bored, but at the same time, I loved it because of how I looked. I loved it when it would finish. That's the best feeling in the fucking world because you make yourself do it. Dude, waking up at my house and going, fuck, I got to go to the gym on a day where I need to do cardio by myself is the hardest fucking thing in the world. It's not hard in in the sense of there are people out there who are starving. I fucking get that. But it's it's such a weird mental challenge for me to stand up, get dressed, and go. I did it. I've done it when I was happiest. That's the truth. You know, when I was working, writing on shows... I would get up at, at fucking eight in the morning and go to the gym, work out hard with Richard, come home, make and take a fucking shower, make a protein shake and go into the office and write bits and make and make good money doing it. I was satisfied in my life and in my career. I was doing what I was doing because it was what I was supposed to be doing. I was earning good money. I was going to the gym and then I was fighting. I was doing, you know, two days a week, three days a week. I'd go to jujitsu or I do I do my kickboxing or MMA. And, and it was just the feeling walking out of those places every single time, knowing I'd accomplished something. It's just such an unbelievable feeling, knowing that you've done the thing that you said you were going to do, because I do so little of that. I do so little of, of accomplishing what I set out to accomplish, of doing the thing I tell myself I know I should do. And that dude, I told you, I don't know how to flex my fucking head. I'm trying. I'm getting there. I'm fucking making it work. And you don't give a fuck. Man. You, uh, maybe you don't want to hear me whining about this shit. I don't know. Who cares? You're in charge. I've thrown this out to you guys. And I'm sure your first directive is going to be, hey, no more talking about how you're fucking things up. Okay, whatever. Uh, but, but, but getting off, I, I told this story, I would get off the treadmill and I'd hit the heavy bag and I would actually dance. I would have my fucking iPod on and I would dance for another like 20 minutes or however long I wanted to. And then I'd walk outside and I'd, I'd put my hands out to my sides, like, a, like you know, like a, my shoulders up, you know, my arms up. Um, there's this guy, named, a wrestler named Taz who used to do it. Raven used to do it, too. It's just, a, it's just a, you know, like a crucifix pose. And I would just look up at the sun. And I would let the sun beat down on my face while the fucking sweat ran down and my shirt was soaked. You could wring my shirt out. And, uh, and I had my arms out and a breeze and staring up. And I was like, I love California. I love my life. I love me. I love how this makes me feel. And I remember that. I know that. I, it, it sticks with me and it stays with me. But there's also the guy inside me who doesn't want to do a fucking thing. And he's winning. He's winning right now. And that, that applies to real life. That applies to lifting. That apply, well, that, well, not to lifting. I go lift because John's there. I have to. But it applies to cardio. It applies to, to diet. It applies to, you know, because sometimes you say, well, what's, what's the point? You go, and that that's, I'll be truly honest with you. I was taking care of myself. I was really excited. Like I said, I lost all that weight for Jill in the beginning. I was really excited because I felt good. That's, that was another phase of when I felt great because I thought my life was really taking off and changing. And I was like, this is going to work. This is going to be fucking fantastic. And I was, I was excited to, to look good and feel good for somebody for the rest of my life because I had a purpose. And I know I should have a purpose now, but when you're alone in your apartment, there's just, you can just look at it and go, nah, there's no purpose. I talk myself out of having purpose. I talk myself out of doing the things I should do that I know would make me better. I talk myself out of doing stand-up. I talk myself out of going even to hang out. Look, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm not a schmoozer. Well, what the, make yourself a fucking schmoozer, dude. Get out there. Go be seen. Go talk to people. Go do bits. Go fucking, because you know why? Because that might lead to you getting another writing job. And then you can get up at 8 in the morning, and you can fucking go out and lift, and then go home, and then take a protein shake, and then go write somewhere. Uh, you got to quit hoping. I mean, I apologize. You got to quit depending on hope. It's good to have hope. It's good to think to yourself, well, this could happen. I'm good enough where this might happen, but you need to make it happen. You need to go and do things. I, and I'm not, look, I have veered far off into Zig Ziglar fucking territory and nobody wants to hear this shit. I'm not Eckhart Tolle. I'm not going to tell you to fucking stand up and greet the world and say hi to Jesus. Fuck all that nonsense. But I am asking for help. 
and it, it, it might be a weird thing. Because, look, I ask you guys for a ton of things. I ask you for Patreon. I ask you to, to patronize the Amazon link. I ask you to do all these things because it helps me. It keeps me afloat. It allows me to do the thing that I want to do more than anything in the world, and that's this. Talk to you guys. Uh, and I like that's why I want to go to England. There are people there who've been asking for me for fucking 10 years. You've got to come here. Even I'm never not funny, people would ask if I was ever going to England or Australia. And you know what? The answer to that is fucking yes, I am. Uh, I'm doing research on work visas. I mean, I, my friend Hannah is over there. My, uh, Liam has already said, uh, jumped in. Uh, one of the Liams, I apologize. I don't want the other Liam to go, what? Uh, but I, there are two Liams who contact me. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jay Alexander, they live in Ireland. They said they would fly over. John is looking for venues. I mean, people are, are mobilizing, and that's fucking great. Uh, you know, I have a friend in, in San Francisco who's reached out and he's like, Hey man, you know, if you wanted to come stay at my house, you could do a show at my house too. Uh, he goes, are you coming up here to record a CD? And I'm like, well, fuck, I was hoping to come to San Francisco in the spring. He's like, well, you can stay at my place. And if you want to do a show at my place, you could. And, uh, so that's now on the docket because you know what I'll do is I'll go there and, uh, I'll record a live podcast in his house, you know, and have people come over and just hang out. Like I said, like the, like the thing I wanted to do in Kansas city before that fucking fell through. Um, and I know I, I spout out grandiose plans and then I wind up and sit around and I, I eat candy bars and I stare at a fucking black and white television show. But I'm, I want that to end. I'm trying to make that end. I'm, I'm reaching out to make that end. I'm bursting out. That's what I'm doing. I'm coming out. <laughs> I want the world to know. I have to let it show. Uh, I'm out. Oh, that's a whole, that has a whole new meaning in this area. I'm not, I'm not coming out like that. Uh, unless you think it'll help. Do you think that'll help me get out of bed at fucking eight o'clock in the morning? Cock? Uh, if so, I'll jump the fence. I don't, I'm willing to try anything at this point. Like I said, I'm 50. I got 25 years left. I got 25 years, 25 years left to try anything, whatever. Uh, I'm already tackling the winter with no winter clothing. I'm ready to fucking make that happen. I, I've got no coat, no, uh, no fucking hats. I used to have them. They're gone. <laughs> but now I'm, I'm. I'm ready. I, you know, I, like I said, I went to the gym with John on yesterday, on Monday, and I fucking lifted, and we, we built me back up, and, and I will be there tomorrow, Wednesday, and, and go make it work and fucking hit it hard, and I cannot fucking wait. I want to get there. I want to work, and I want to be different. I want to be better. You know, I want shirts to fit better. I want pants to fit better. These are all whiny, bullshit teenage things, but I am. Who am, who am I if not a fucking giant teenager? You know that. I've talked about it. When you have no responsibilities, when you got no kids, you got nobody else to take care of, you got to take care of yourself. I'm my kid. And I am a neglectful fucking parent. So they say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, hey, village, I'm asking for your help. Rally around me. You ain't got to bring me covered dishes. You don't have to fucking read me to sleep. But if you wanted to check in periodically, if you wanted to volunteer to be the person who goes, hey, you're doing the things you're doing. Hey, are you up for this? Hey, what are you doing, man? If you guys want to get after me, I'm giving you permission. Ah, look, some of you out there are fucking tweak heads, and that's going to be a fucking misery when you guys kind of contact me, and I'll do my best to answer everything and stay in contact with all of you. And I know when I say I'll do my best, that sounds like a fucking cop-out, just like me telling you I went to Smash Burgers, a fucking cop-out. I know it's, I, I'm sure I made it sound like it was okay, but I, I, you know, I was with Maki, she wanted to go there, so I went. I didn't have to eat, but I did, because I was being hungry, and I, I, I it's stupid, it's, a, it's, it's a process. It's a fucking process. But at least if I eat protein or whatever, I, I can be I can be okay. I know you think it's ridiculous, but I've looked. If you eat protein, it's, it's all the fucking mayonnaise and ranch dressings and shit like that. That's what fucks you up. It's soda. So no fast food, no candy, no soda. That's it. No fast food, no candy, no soda. Period. Fucking period. Uh, and 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 I'm not doing it. I'm just not. Uh, now what what counts as fast food? I'm talking about the chains. <laughs> Here's time for the negotiation, folks. Here's what I'm talking about: the chain restaurants. Uh, no, but if I, here's the thing: it's just it's just changing who you are as a person. No fast food, no candy, no soda. But if I want to have a taco off a taco truck, I I can do that. It's one because the thing is not to eat yourself into a fucking stupor, not to eat fucking eight pounds of guacamole and eat like a fuck stick. If you get up and you exercise, you can. If you're burning shit off, you can eat whatever you want. You can put whatever you want in the fucking machine as long as the the, the motor's hot enough to burn it off. So, you know, if you see me and I'm like, I, I you see me holding, a, if I have a soda somewhere, then, well, no, fuck that. I'm, I'm tired of negotiating. Fuck this, man. The whole point is not negotiating. Why am I arguing with myself? <laughs> I should be dancing with myself. I should billy idle the shit out of this goddamn thing. Uh, from the walls of Tokyo to the London towns of Gogo. Is that, I don't even know what the fucking words are. With the record reflection in the mirrors, the record collection in the mirror reflection, I'm a dancing with myself. But instead, I'm fighting with myself right here. You hear me? Because I try to, it said, I told you, fat people negotiate. They make deals. Well, maybe I'll just have some milk now. Maybe I'll do this. Well, you shouldn't work in absolutes. That's what I was taught when I got, when I had to go to the fucking counseling in order to lose the weight and get the fat guy surgery. They're like, look, you can't fucking cut yourself off from the world because that's just going to make you fuck up. 
And, you know, they talk, everybody talks about it like a cheat meal. Hey, man, have a cheat meal. You got a cheat day. I've had a cheat life. I've had a cheat fucking life. And I can't anymore, man. Two thirds of it is over. I got I got the last third to salvage it. I just want to go have fun and travel and, and love people and be loved and be happy. And I want to do it in a comfortable fashion. I can't I can't get diabetes. I can't let my knees fucking go. You know, like I told you, it's, I've talked about this how many fucking times, but I'm asking you now. Takes a village. Step out. Help me. Reach out. Be there. Do the thing. Uh, <laughs> do your job. Be your best. Um... I, 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 this is, it sounds like a weird pep talk for you guys to fix me and save me. I'm begging you guys to save me, and I'm not. I'm really not. Because uh, if you're not interested in this and you think it's fucked up, I totally get that too. Tell me to take a fucking walk. I'll get this fixed on my own. I am going to. That's you know I have to do all the heavy lifting, all the real hard parts. Uh, but yeah, but I can't. I know I hear myself even negotiating and talking to you. I went to Smashburger on fucking the day after Rock Bottom night. I still went to Smashburger. But I went because Maki wanted to go. And I could have said to her, hey, you know what, Maki, I'm really not eating this stuff if, if we can go somewhere else. Because she said afterwards, she goes, you know, you could have just told me that. But, I mean, Maki's got cancer. What am I going to do, fucking deprive her of a cheeseburger because I'm fat? I can't do that. I'm there to visit my friend Maki and bring her some cheer. I'm there to hang out with her and have a good time. And, by the way, what did I do? I fell asleep on her fucking couch. Did I mention that yet? I don't know if I did. I went to Maki's house. I was, I, we went out. We had a smash burger. I went back to her house and I fucking crashed out on her big overstuffed down sofa. I'm like, what? A, you're not bringing joy. You're just a big fucking idiot, but it's because I hadn't, uh, you know, that morning I had to get up and drive and, and uh, we don't care. Nobody gives a fuck. No excuses. Um, but yeah, come on, Maki, she's, she's, unfortunately, she's, she's undergoing procedures. She wants to have a fucking cheeseburger. I'm taking her for a goddamn cheeseburger. It's happening. But I know you're saying, oh, well, Mike, you didn't have to have a cheeseburger. You're right. Okay, I get it. See, that's what I need. I need you guys to step up for me with that. Because uh, in my head, I'm like, well, it was protein. I ate protein and whatever. And it's like, well, yeah, but protein, you know, you could have just a fucking plain hamburger patty. You didn't have to have the fucking avocado. But avocado is a superfood. Avocado and blueberries are good for you. Tuna is good for you. Uh, I got a whole list of superfoods. I got, I got a whole list of everything. I got lists upon fucking lists that I ignore. But I can't ignore this. I want to be better. And I need help. I do. I mean, I burned out one wife trying to make her fucking my, my mom. And now I'm going to burn out an entire community of listeners trying to make them my mom. <laughs> uh, I, I hope I don't burn you out. Because, again, if you don't want to participate, I totally get it. If you want to jump in and Fitbit with me, that's totally cool. If you want to, if you want to set up a Facebook page, I don't care. We can. If, you, if we want to just make it a whole fitness thing, we'll all be like a fitness army and we'll get together and do this. Anybody else out there? Hey, look, if anybody else out there wants to do this with me, I'm in. You tell me, I'll fucking get after it. I'll write you. You write me. I'll send you photos of me sweaty. Don't send me any fucking photos. I don't want any of your fucking photos. But still, I'm glad you're thinking of me. Take a sweaty photo and tell me, hey, Mike, I did this in the treadmill. Whatever the fuck. I'm in. Let's do it together. I don't want it to be one-sided. I mean, I do because I'm selfish. I want you guys to be the ones who fucking bear me aloft on your shoulders and make sure I accomplish all the things I want to fucking accomplish. However, that's not the way to be. I need to reach out. If we're a community, if we're a gang, if we're a gang of Westside 86 Jokers and we're friends and fans and everybody else, if I'm really your internet chum and now your internet child, then I need to be there for you guys too. Uh, and now look, this doesn't mean you can write me in the middle of the night and go boo-hoo, I'm sad, because I don't give a fuck about that. I'm not interested in saving you emotionally, because I'm sad too. And I'm not going to write you and go boo-hoo, I'm sad. I mean, this is more of a physical thing. Let's think Let's think of the physical realm. And as we go ahead and we make ourselves feel better and our pants fit nicer, maybe then I'll reach out and hear about your ex. Maybe that'll happen. Uh, maybe you can go ahead and put out a show and have me as a guest and we'll talk about your ex. I don't care. But the point is, uh, don't abuse the privilege. I'm still the talent. Don't think that you're going to go ahead and come to my house and make me do fucking uh, up and downs. That's not going to fucking happen. Nobody's going to come over and watch me plank. Well, fuck that, actually. Yeah, come over and watch me plank. Hey, ladies, who's, who's like tiny? Come sit on my back while I plank. Oh, my God, that's what I want. That's what this whole show is getting around to. Fuck, fuck fast food and candy and rock bottom fucking night. I just want a lady to fucking lay flat on my back when I fucking planked. Oh, you, uh, you have no idea. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Jill was tiny, and she would do that. She would just lay flat on my back, and I would I would fucking do a push-up or, like, plank with her on me. Oh, I loved it. So anybody who's tiny wants to plank on me, I'll get Randy to plank on me, but she's never here. Fuck, i got to get Randy to plank on me. Randy, you got to plank on me. She never listens. That's a lie. She's actually listened the last few weeks. And then she writes me, and she's like, hey. Uh, and it's funny because she wasn't going to listen a couple of weeks ago because of a story I was going to fucking tell you guys. And I'll wind up telling you again later another time. I, I'm, I'm giving it some time to breathe. 
Uh, but stick around. You want to hear that story? Look, that, that's my coming attraction. That's my cliffhanger for you guys. There's a story coming up <laughs> later. Not in this episode. This episode's all about me making you uh, make me put on gym shoes. That's what this entire fucking thing's about. I want you guys to rally me. I want you. And when I say bear a loft on your shoulders, I mean it's going to take a lot of you. I'm a fucking house at this fucking point. So, guys, thrust me to the skies. Throw me up in the air like you're Jesus and, and not like you are Jesus, like I'm your Jesus. Throw me up and worship me and let me face the sun. I just want to look at the sun with sweat dripping down my face and realize that things are okay. And you guys are all underneath me to catch me if I fall. I don't even know why I want that. I'm just making this sound a lot more serious than it is. The point is, I'm fucking ruined, man. I'm a car accident. And, uh, and we got to tow me into your body shop and you guys got to work on me. Help me out. Let's get me back in a fucking running condition. Let's get me back on the road. Let's get me back on the road literally and figuratively. Let's get me back up and running and, uh, and humming smoothly and feeling good and looking good and feeling better than I've ever felt and looking better than I've ever looked and having you guys going, wow, you're the best. And I'll go, yeah, that's great, because that's all I want. Feed me. Feed me, Seymour. I'm the fucking plant in Little Shop of Horrors. That's all I want. I just want fucking your blood. Come over and cut your finger and drip it into my goddamn mouth. That's all I need from you guys. Encouragement and blood. Make sure that I'm the best I can be, and I don't give a fuck about your lives. That seems harsh. Really? No, I mean, of course I give a fuck about your lives. Let's do this. Let's rally. I'm, I'm already regretting this decision. This is a dumb thing to do. Is it? I don't know if it is. Um, but has it ever stopped me before? I don't, I don't think so. I don't fucking think so. You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash The 40-Year-Old Boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash The 40-Year-Old Boy. You can find me at Instagram and Snapchat at Mike40YOB. Instagram and Snapchat, I'm Mike40YOB. Find me there, please. Uh, remember that Ryan Dirks does all the web stuff for this show. He's the coolest. He's a great guy, and he's on board for whenever we go decide to make changes. We're going to. Look, I'm making changes in my life now, Ryan. Settle the fuck down. We'll get to the web in a second. But right now, we got to go ahead and make sure that I can do the things that I need to do for everybody. And, uh, or, or whatever the fuck. I don't know. <laughs> the goal is in the last hour of me pep-talking myself into a fucking spin. Uh, so Ryan Dirks is available at Facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. If you want to be his friend and tell him thanks for doing the web stuff. Uh, remember that uh, Giovanni Giorgio Peluso is the coolest guy in the world. And he has his own podcasts, Pod Gods, and all of the Love Line stuff that he's manufactured for those people. Uh, you can find him at Facebook.com slash Giovanni Giorgio Peluso. And look, he is super fan Gio. Not super fan of me, but super fan of others. And he have, he's done these other shows. And I don't, honestly, I don't care about the Love Line nonsense. It's not for me. It's his life's work. So I, I humor him and make him think that I like it. That's a lie. I don't really make him think that I like it. I, I think it's tremendous what he's done for those people. And I think he doesn't get nearly the recognition he deserves for the work he's done on behalf of the Love Line show. That's all I'll say. Uh, hey, Corolla's not booking me anyway, so why not go ahead and say my honest opinion? Uh, but Gio has done a fucking ton of work for us. He put up our whole YouTube channel. He built the infrastructure for it. He uploaded everything, and he's in the process of still uploading stuff. Fuck, he's uploading things that I didn't even tell him to upload yet. Uh, because he's trying to, he's trying to help. You know what? He's trying to be a guy. He's one of, he's one of the dudes. He's going. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. He's, he's already that dude, and he's finding out that, you know, it's, it's. He's the unstoppable force, and I'm an immovable object, and we butt heads quite a bit. But I'm, I'm going to be better going forward, working on that kind of thing. And by the way, that should be a drinking game for the show. I'm going to be better. I know what I need to do. I just need to do it. Anytime that happens, just get fucking loaded. Just take a shot. You'll be fucking dead by the end of a half episode. Um. So Giorgio, super fan Gio, not super fan of me, but super fan of others. He's done the YouTube channel. He does amazingly complicated work for me, and he's always available. I don't give a fuck what time or day. If I text the guy, he texts me right back, and he's always willing to do whatever I need him to do. Uh, I mean, that, if he puts up a YouTube channel and gets rid of a body, that's a fucking guy you want in your corner, and he's the guy. So thank you, Gio. You can go to Facebook.com slash Giovanni Giorgio Peluso and become his friend on there, and then he's got a Twitter account, all sorts of stuff. You can find that via his Facebook, write him a note, and he'll give you his, his social media stuff, because you know what? This isn't his fucking show. Uh, and again, our great friend David Mex Hernandez is the coolest. He is the guy out there doing all sorts of business. He is uh, working in a coal mine, working down, 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 working in a coal mine. Woo! You gotta sit down. Oh, Lord, I am so tired. David is available at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Be his friend there. Tell him he's the best. Tell him you love him. Tell him that his memes are awesome. Uh, <laughs> all of his, tell, him, tell him, go, go, get Oswald. That's the way to do it, man. Inspector, Inspector Gadgemex. Da, 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 go, go, Max Arms. Put Oswald in jail. Uh, and Professor Claw with the fucking cat. I don't even, I've, done, I've never watched an episode of Inspector Gadget, but I know all of the references for it. Terrible. 
Uh, all right, so David is the coolest, and he does all of the artwork and the music for this show. Uh, I buy, like the theme song and whatever song I'm about to play next or whatever bit I'm about to play next. You might even hear his voice on it. I don't know, but I'll tell you this. If you want to find out his personal artwork that he does that's really cool, you can go to artbydmh.com. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com. Uh, you know, he's got plenty of stuff on there that makes amazing holiday gifts. You can commission him to do holiday paintings. You can actually, you know what, if you wanted to do this, get him to do your family Christmas card. Because yeah, I told you, he drew us as the Peanuts once. It's fucking amazing. All of our friends love it so much. It comes out every year. Uh, maybe we'll put that up. Maybe I'll throw it up there if we haven't done it already. So please, by all means, contact our friend David Mex Hernandez at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez or go ahead and make a purchase at artbydmh.com. He's got Guyscapes. He's got Valcons. Nope, he's got Guycons and Valscapes. Those are always available. And like I said, you can do custom work, whatever you want to get him to do. Contact him and he'll be happy to do it. That's artbydmh.com, A R T B Y D M H. Dot com. Battered and broken, no jokers, no joking, mired as I can be. Life passes you by. When you don't even try, I let my life happen to me. Oh, the times they are changing, you see. Oh, the times they are changing. I know that I'm funny, but it's made me no money. Don't you all know that I'm great? I ain't gonna move it. I don't wanna prove it. So I'll sit in my chair and just wait. Oh, the times they are changing. times they are changing for me said I'd get healthy try to get wealthy but that hasn't happened just yet one day I'll do it I'll be angry through it money on that bed Oh, the times they are changing You see Oh, the times they are changing For me I know it sounds silly but help me, Miss Lily. So tired of playing this game. Please don't ignore me. Do all the work for me so I can have someone to blame. Oh, the times they are. They are changing for me. Ten years of playing, a decade of saying all the things I said I would do. You ever get the feeling as you stare at the ceiling that folks are just fed up? With you, oh, the times they are changing. You see, oh, the times they are changing for me, and.
I got a rock. Now, not like I got a rock, like Twisted Sister, like Dee Snider. I obtained a rock. I was given a rock. I have a rock that was given to me as a gift. Did I mention it earlier? Uh, our friend Maki, home, working on crafts, hiding in her house like I hide in my apartment. Uh, unless I go there and take her for a smash burger and buy her four thousand dollars worth of fucking pastries, she uh, she does amazing craft work. She builds Legos. First of all, let me tell you this: I was at her house. I'm hanging out at her house, and it was uh, totally fun. She lives in the desert uh, on the sun, actually, because it's you know it's that thing where by my house it's 68, I get to her house it's 90. Uh, but it was fun. I got out there, and uh, last time I went there, she gave me a fish. I don't know if I mentioned this on the air. She uses lucite, and she pours it into a thing with a fish, and it looks like the fish is swimming. It's a paperweight that looks like a fish is swimming inside of it. It's fucking beautiful. So I have that. It's on my desk. I actually use it. It's sitting right here next to all of my Funkos, my Jokers, uh, and my, uh, you know, my uh, Tarantinos and my Raider bobbleheads, all the gifts from you guys. Um, and I've gotten a few of them that I'll talk about in just a second. But now I have a new rock. I'm in here. Listen, that's a rock that she gave me. She, uh, she finds stones that are like smooth and then she paints them. And I know you're like, oh, that sounds like like some next level fourth grade nonsense. No, bullshit. This is fucking, like she paints it initially gold. And then it is, it looks like a Jackson Pollock rock. It's a Jackson Pollock rock. <laughs> if, he, if Jackson Pollock was on the Flintstones, that's what she gave me. Um, it's just, it's different colors and dots and you have to wait for them to dry. There's purple and sea blue and, and Carolina blue and... I mean, teal and purple and red, and I mean, it, but it all goes together. It looks phenomenal. There's colors within colors. There's dots within dots. I mean, it's one of those things where if you got high, you could stare at this fucking thing and think there was another world in it. You know, it looks like the sky. Ooh, that's me dropping the rock. Holy fuck! I have a glass desk. Did you hear that? <laughs> that would have been how great would that have been on the show if I dropped the fucking gifted rock through the glass desk? Uh, by the way, that is one of my favorite parables from Aesop: dropping the glass rock through the glass desk, or the the gifted rock. Drop the gifted rock through the glass desk. Actually, I think that's a that's a uh, a hymn. What the fuck? No, what the a psalm? There you go. It's a psalm. Uh, and and verily did Jesus drop the gifted rock through the glass desk onto the lucite fish. All right. Uh, but Maki gave me this rock. It's fucking amazing. I can't stop looking at it because it is dots within dots and colors within colors. And, and uh, as I've told you many, many times, I'm fascinated by things that I can't do. That's why when David does the artwork or the music, I'm just like, fuck, dude, I can't. I mean, I got no, I got no shot. All I can do is talk to you for two fucking hours and beg for your fucking help. That's what I got in my corner. That's the only thing I got locked and loaded all fucking 24 hours of a day. Uh, I get the drop of a hat. I can just sit there and fucking, I, I could give you the music band speech, but I'm saving me instead of selling a fucking monorail on the Simpsons. Um, so thank you, Maki. I got this rock, which was amazing as I went to her house and spent time. But also she built the fucking Lego sets. Now look, I'm a guy, if you said to me Legos, I'd be like, eh, fuck, who cares? Um, until I see them. That's the thing. I, I don't, Legos, they hold no interest for me. I wouldn't think the fucking, because like I told you, when I went and saw the Lego movie with Ahmad and fucking, uh, or the Batman Lego movie, he goes, we're seeing that tonight. I'm like, why, in Kuwait, I'm seeing the Batman Lego movie? All right. Seems like a leap. Uh, but then I watch it, and it's fucking awesome. It's a joke machine. It's fucking funny from pillar to post. And I still haven't seen the original Lego movie. You know, I almost watched it over at Maki's house, but I fell asleep on the fucking overstuffed sofa like a dumbass. Uh, she played it. She threw it on, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to watch this. And then I melted into fucking four downfilled sofa cushions and probably snored. Oh, awful. And she still gave me a rock. How do you do that? I go to your house. I fall asleep. You still give me a rock? That's a lovely woman. So... Uh, she threw on the Lego movie, but I didn't get to watch it. But eventually I'll watch it. But out on her patio, or in her sunroom, I should say, because the patio is, I guess, outside. But she had a sunroom, and uh, there's a pool table with the cover on it, but the pool table is now Legoland. Like, she builds Lego villages, and she puts them up there, and you can build them separately. And look, I didn't even know fucking Legos were such... I knew they were huge, okay, because I'd seen the Star Wars Lego sets, and people love them. But I didn't know... She told me she bought... She could sell one on eBay for $400. She goes, and I think she bought another one on eBay for $300. She goes, yeah, but you could get this because... You, she goes, I could even sell the instruction manuals for these for $100 each because then people buy them and then they order the parts from Legoville or whoever the fuck they are, Mattel or Bronco, and they, they build the shit. They, they put it together. They buy the parts individually. And these, I mean, she showed me these little villages. There's a movie theater she built. She built a fucking barber shop and a, and a French restaurant, like a cafe house. And, uh, and here's the best part. She takes the roof off, right? And inside there's like one dude in the dentist's office. It's got an actual working dentist's chair. It's got a sink that looks like it has water in it because it's blue, the Lego. I mean, it, it, and not just like shitty blue. It looks fucking amazing. It's like Maki Rock blue. And dude, 
sure enough, man, she pushes the chair down, and if someone was in there getting their, their fucking choppers done, it would work. But there's only a dentist in there. So I said to her, I go, ooh, I go, this makes me sad. She goes, why? I go, well, I mean, he has no friends. She goes, oh, you know, I actually think about that when I'm doing this. I go, yeah, exactly. I think about it all the time. I said, this guy's trapped forever in his dentist's office. First of all, he's standing up. His legs got to be killing him. Second of all, he has no friend to talk to in the dentist's office. She goes, well, here, there's a back room over here. And she opens this door, and there was like a tax guy in another office, kind of adjoining office. And, uh, and she goes, there, now they can talk to one another. I said, oh, okay, well, I feel better about that. So then we looked at more buildings, and then on the floor, there was a cat, and he was alone. I said, oh, this cat is totally lonely. She goes, wait a second. She grabs the cat. She puts him in the dentist's office. That doesn't seem hygienic in real life. But now you got a cat and a tax guy and a dentist. And now we got a party. That's all you need. An open door and a cat. That makes everything better. Um, so she, uh, she showed me these things. And they're so intricate. They're unbelievable. And she had one up on a shelf. She goes, yeah, I haven't brought that. And she, I go, well, take that down. You shouldn't have set anything up on a fucking shelf. Because now, of course, I see the Lego things. And I'm like, ah, who cares about Legos? And then I see them and I go, these need to be all over everybody's house. Everyone needs to have these on display. It's like holiday displays. I don't give a fuck really about your, your front yard and your ghosts on Halloween or your fucking Santas and your reindeer. To me, I'm just like, nah, whatever. Until you see a really good one. And then you're like, holy fuck, why doesn't everybody in the world do this? You know, half people got, you know, a, a pumpkin hanging out of their mailbox and, and maybe a, a skeleton who's, who's annoyed. But then everybody else is like, oh, my God, I've built a full-scale replica of the Tingler Theater. And if you sit in at the theater, fucking seats buzz. I'm like, Jesus, why doesn't everybody do this? Because it would take work. And, I mean, fuck, I'm hiding in my house. I don't want to go help anybody do that nonsense. But I'll tell you what, when she put out all those Lego things, I was like, this is the greatest fucking thing. I would have no patience for it, the minutia and going through. Because she even told me, man. It's a hard thing fighting through on as we talk. She said, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's really intricate and detailed, but she loves doing it. She loves getting the pieces and figuring them out. And my mom used to do puzzles. Like, and not just like, hey, look, six pieces, and there's Huckleberry Hound. My mom would do these fucking thousand-piece puzzles with a windmill or three windmills, which is even harder. Because, I mean, yeah, one windmill, you're like, all right, the windmill pieces go over here. No, there's three windmills. Holy fuck. Any of these pieces could go anywhere at any time. You actually have to think. I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's like a Rubik's Cube. I'd never figured out a Rubik's Cube. I had friends who could do it in like 30 seconds. And I'd be like, how the fuck did you learn that? And it's like, oh, there's like a code or a thing or you got to learn it. I'm like, I got no idea. I, I feel like a Luddite, like a caveman. Like you see the smart guy go and solve the cube. And then he hands it to me. And then I just whip it off his forehead. Punk! <laughs> the cube funny. Uh, all right. So Maki gave me a rock and then she showed me her Lego stuff. That was pretty goddamn cool. I dug it. So I guess she's sponsoring the show with her rock. You guys want to buy rocks and lucite fish? Find Maki. She'll go ahead and take care of that. I've made her do fill orders that she had no plan on ordering or filling. Uh, but we do have real sponsors for this show. As you guys know, all the time there are sponsors, including GetTheButters.com. That's GetTheButters.com. Use the code 40YOB and get a butter, a balm, a lube, a bomb, a mask, a loofah, a glove, a fucking uh, some suds, just a jar of suds. And you know what? You can get some used suds from Jerome. Have Jerome take a bath, bottle up his suds, and send them to you. And you'll smell it, and you got the essence of Sudsy Jerome. Oh, that is, that is a fantastic short story that I read in GQ as a child. The essence of Sudsy Jerome. Um, please gather up your, your money and go to getthebutters.com and use it. Uh, you know, again, holidays are coming. If you want to buy some gifts, go to getthebutters.com and get some lotions and some potions and some uh, motions in the oceans. Get all that stuff. Anything else that rhymes is available at getthebutters.com. That's where our friend lives. His name's Jerome. And again, like I said, he will happily take a milk bag bath, suds it up for you, and then scoop up those suds and send them to you because he likes to keep himself soft. He's downy smooth, that guy. Uh, and so he's going to send you some suds. So please do something. But whatever you do, whatever you get at getthebutters.com, use the code 40YOB. That's 40YOB to save yourself money and do all of the cool things you want to do over there at getthebutters.com. Uh, another sponsor of said show is, of course, Fearful, Ze or Fearful Jesuit. Fearful Jesuit at the Paranoid Strain podcast. Now, look, you guys have reached out to him via Twitter. You've reached out via email. You've told me how much you love the show, and you've told him the same thing. And thank you. I appreciate that because it lets him know that he's done the right thing by coming to our show to attract a fan base. Uh, you guys are really cool, and you guys can look and get in touch with him. Again, he, uh, he's desperate. That cat's, I mean, if he's, if he's advertising on this show, that's a desperate motherfucker. I mean, he's, you know, he can't just spend the whole time himself talking about people in courtrooms trying to get tased and not tased and trying to duck in and do shit. Uh, he can't be talking about the Southern Poverty Law Center by himself all the time, so he might invite you guys to call up and present a segment. He likes different voices. He likes having different people involved. You heard of the show, again, like I've said, tightly produced, something that I don't do, fascinating to me because I could never pull it off. 
and that's why I love it. The Paranoid Strain, Fearful Jesuit's the host. Uh, go ahead, I think it's episode four out now, and I don't know when episodes five and six and seven are coming out. I think he's working on them, obviously. It's the holidays. It all slows down over there at Paranoid Strain. They had Because the elves, he loans them back out, because he usually has the Paranoid Strain elves, but then Santa calls all elves on deck around the Christmas season, and they all got to go up and build a Charlie in the box and leave fucking Paranoid Strain by himself. So don't be surprised if episode five is about how fucked up Santa is and exposing child elf labor laws over there at fucking North Pole. I, I think he might do that. Uh, so please go to the Get the Paranoid Strain in iTunes. Leave feedback in iTunes. A review of the show is always appreciated. And also write him personally. When you listen to the show, he'll give an address. And whenever you do this, mention the Mike Schmidt or the 40-year-old boy that I sent you there. And uh, and the reason you discovered the show and you like the show is because of me. Now, if you hate the show, maybe keep my name out of your mouth. Maybe you do that because this guy's paying to be part of this show. I don't want to fucking run him down. Uh, but if you don't like it, you know what? Write him and he wants constructive criticism. Go ahead and let him know what's happening. Uh, so please go to get Paranoid uh, Strain, The Paranoid Strain in the iTunes store. And I don't think he has a website or anything yet. He's all working on all this stuff. It's all very new. All of his his whole budget went to me. So fucking the least thing you can do is support this guy. The Paranoid Strain, Fearful Jesuit is the host. And uh, amazing. And again, listen from, not just listen to episode four, listen from episode one because they are all uh, interconnected. They all lead from one issue to another issue to another issue. And you'll be listening to three and go, hey, I remember this from fucking episode one. So it's really an amazing feat and, uh, and, and something that has continuity, which is this show does not fucking have. So please, go listen to something mannered and go listen to something uh, polite and go listen to something that actually gets the job done uh, because he's the big daddy cane of podcasting, fearful Jesuit at the Paranoid Strain. Uh, hey, let's talk about this. I talked about Maki giving me a rock. Well, I got some other gifts from you fine folks. Uh, yeah, that's right. I went to my P.O. box for the first time in months because I usually don't go because nobody sends anything over there. And then I I'll, look, I open the, the fucking, you know, there's a little box. And I'll open that. There's some always some advertisements in there, but it's always cool to find stuff from somebody. But I went this time because I knew there was going to be something waiting for me. And that something was, I may have mentioned friend of the show, Chuck Hudspeth before. I may have even mentioned him earlier today because he's a huge wrestling dude. Uh, and he actually won the mystery shirt for me. And then he sent me a poster of his, uh, a poster. He sent me a, he blew up a poster and had a frame of his fucking six year old daughter. Hi, I'm going to jail. Um, he sent me a photo of his, of his daughter wearing the mystery shirt and doing a stew look. It's fucking phenomenal. I think I threatened to put it up on the, on the page. And I, I wanted Chuck to contact me and tell me it was okay. I don't even, who cares? I, maybe I'll throw it up on the Joker's page. But it's a great photo. Um, and you know, I might have already posted it. Jesus Christ, I'm old. I'm fucking old, man. I'm almost dead. And I got no producer to help me keep track of shit. So please, by all means, bear with me. If I've talked about this shit before, just sit there politely. It'll all be over soon. Uh, <laughs> so uh, our friend Chuck Hudspeth, he gave me a GoPro to take to Kuwait. And then I took it and I didn't use it. And then he told me, well, man, you can just, I, so I sent it back to him. And then he's like, dude, uh, you can just keep the GoPro. Like, just keep it. And I go, well, I already sent you back all the, the whole thing. And he goes, uh, did, I, you didn't send the camera back. And then I was like, uh, no, I did for sure. And all he got was all the wires. But I, so then I, I was like, fuck, dude, I must have lost it in Kuwait. I was furious. And then I think it was a month later, I was going through my desk and underneath like three things, there was the GoPro. So I said, I've got it. I'll send it to you. And he goes, fuck that. I'll just send you back the wires. So I just got a box. I hadn't even opened it yet. But he sent me a box with wires and plugs and all the stuff. So now I have a GoPro. Will I use it? I will. Will I take, you know what? Maybe that's the thing I do. Maybe I take it on my workouts. You guys want to do that? Because Joe Rogan has started doing that. He's taking his fucking GoPro out for mountain runs. And uh, all you hear is just his feet hitting the fucking rocks and him breathing. Is that anything you guys would want to pay attention to? You want to see a fat guy labor? Oh, that's what we got to do. Let's put that, you know what? We'd have a lot more luck if we put that GoPro on the on the my television set so you could watch me watching it. Holy fuck, would that be great. I got to shame myself into action with this GoPro. Uh, watch me trying on old pants. Ah, it's fucking perfect. So anyway, I got this GoPro. Now I got to figure out what the fuck to do with it and how to work it. Uh, but I'm excited to have it. Thank you, Chuck, for sending that. I got that box. Uh, I did get another package. And this is, uh, I, I must apologize to this person. Listener Joel McKean. Uh, been a listener for quite a long time. Has reached out in the past. A fantastic person. He sent me something in September. Uh, it actually, it's postmarked August 30th. <laughs> so uh, that's been there for two or three months. But I opened it up when I got home, and here's what Joel sent me. And I, I want to read this. I hope he's not upset that I read the card that he included. But it says, hi, Mike. I'm really proud of this story. Your storytelling helped me be brave enough to tell it. Enjoy. And uh, he's at joelmckean.com. You can visit him over there. And he sent me a comic book um, called Peer. And I read it. And it is, uh, I'm assuring, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's autobiographical. And it's about a young man who, uh, you know, he has two brothers and he has a family life and he 
uh, is fascinated by things that maybe his family and his brothers and sisters, his two brothers, do not understand. And he's young, so he's trying to be understood. And he, he I don't want to give too much of it away, but, uh, you know, he, he imagines, it's, it's, it's got a, uh, well, I don't want to say my interpretation of it, but I mean, it was, it's called Peer. And it's essentially about a boy looking for a peer. And uh, when I read it, I was honored that he would say that it was my storytelling that led him to be brave enough to tell this story because I won't lie. And again, this is probably not something he wants to hear, but I got a little misty when I read it. There was a little dust in the room. I got all choked up reading this story, um, mainly because I'm, you know, I'm that fu- much of a fucking half a pussy at this point in my life where anything to do with childhood and nostalgia brings me right back and makes me go, ooh. Um, but, to see a, but to see a story of someone who's maybe lost and doesn't know if they'll ever be found eventually be found that hits home so uh thank you joel mckean at joelmckean.com and thank you for the kind words telling that my my storytelling helped you be brave enough to tell this story and i will tell you that this comic book certainly uh this show did not influence it in any way a shape or form and there will be no other comic books influenced by this particular show there will be no illustrations other than the one max is doing for the fucking show itself but there will be no comic books no no fucking songs sung no sonnets written about this particular episode but who cares right we turn them out we make sure that they're the best they can possibly be and i try to be as funny as i possibly can and whether it's me telling you please come over here and put my underwear on for me or whether it's me going hey do you want me to come over and put my underwear on for you and you'll take photographs of me and then inject me with meth who knows where the show will end up sometimes uh, but thank you Joel McKean for thinking enough of me to share your art and uh, that I was influenced, influential in that art with me I appreciate it very much uh, we also got another box and this is from our friends KC and Andrea Bills now I will. I should say this. I, I you know, I, I'm going to say this. Fuck it. I don't care. I've been sitting on this forever. Uh, I did a show and I was talking about uh, uh, photograph 31. Remember that when I was talking about t- taking cock photos and all this other bullshit. And uh, Casey texted me. Did I, I, and look, if I've said this on the show, I apologize because I, I wasn't going to. But then I think I might have somehow because I forget what I say. I just spit stuff out. But Casey wrote me and he was literally, you know, and I, I'm sure his wife is going to be thrilled to hear this. But he wrote me and he's like, hey, look, if you ever were serious about like giving out photo 31, uh, Andrea would absolutely want to see it. You've talked about it so much that she feels that she has to at this point. And I'm like, well, how are you doing, married couple who just reached out for that? That's fantastic. And by the way, not married couple. That's just husband who was just like, yeah, you know what? I think my wife would probably want to see your cock if you thought about throwing it on display. Uh, and I'm confident in saying this because I know none of Casey and Andrea's friends listen to this fucking show and it will not affect their lives in the least. But I, I tell you this story because they sent me a, a, a box and he told me that it was coming. So I was like, all right, well, thank you. And I, uh, I opened it up and there's a note with it, but instead I pulled out first and I'll take a picture of it. And I will put this on the Joker's page for sure. Um, I pull out what can only be described as a cock sock. <laughs> Uh, literally it is a, it is a sock for your cock. And I pulled it out and I, and because, because again, I know it's from Casey and Andrea and I know that he had sent me that thing before where, and then, so in, I saw this cock sock and in my head, my brain immediately went to, holy fuck. He wants me to take an incognito photo of my cock. That's what he wants. Like she, or not he wants, she wants. She wants me, like I'll take a picture of the photo, but it'll be wearing a costume, so maybe it won't be recognized. And I think I even mentioned that sometime on my show. I was like, ah, it's, uh, you know, I wear a, my cock as a mustache, so maybe, whatever the fuck. I, I've alluded to this before, so I fucking died. I was like, holy shit, a cock sock. They actually want a photo of my cock in disguise, incognito cock. Uh, and then I read the note. And here's the notes. Uh, Andrea knit this sock using yarn that is 70% merino wool, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Machine wash and dry or wash and hang dry. If you look closely with the opening down, the cuff does have 40YOB on both sides, uh, which is craziness. She knitted 40YOB into my cock sock. And, uh, and then she says she didn't use a pattern for it. She just created this. And then here's the last sentence of the note. Because, again, I'm still thinking cock sock. It says, hopefully you can use it on your mic. M-I-C. Thank you for the show, Casey and Andrea Bills. Now, they're lovely people. I've met them in the past, and they're, they're terrific. Uh, but this is, this had, I, I, and so then I'm mad at myself. I'm like, you actually thought somebody sent you a cock sock, you dumbass? Like, this is, because I've talked about the stupid sock and everybody, and Mech's making fun of it and all this bullshit on my microphone. I didn't even, but my mind, of course, leaps right away, because if I want to, you see the picture of it, you're going to go, yeah, that's a fucking cock sock. I mean, you will, you will, I will not be wrong. You will absolutely agree with me. Uh, but yeah, it's a fucking cock sock. And, and 
And I still, even from the note, the note is ambiguous enough because where it's just like, yeah, it's it's monogrammed with 40 YLB, which I now I'm wearing this on my cock, absolutely. But then it's like, yeah, you know, hopefully you can use it on your mic. Now that also has a double meaning. It could be Mike, could be Mike, M-I-K-E. I don't know. Regardless, it was a nice gift from Andrea. She knitted it herself and from Casey, who bothered to send it to me. Thank you for this wink, microphone wink sock. And uh, I certainly wouldn't think to use it for anything else in the future. But thank you so much. Uh, Joel McKean, my words have influenced you to create devastating artwork and uh, moving artwork and artwork that others should enjoy. And uh, Casey and Andrea, my words have moved you to fucking knit a KKK hood for my cock. Thank you. I now have an incognito racist cock. That's a lie. It's red. But still. Uh, it's phenomenal. You know, you know what? Uh, and I'm just going to say this just as a goof. I'm only saying this to be silly. Uh, you know what? Hey, Casey and Andrea, you only missed one beat on this. This thing should have fucking devil horns. How does it not have devil horns for fuck's sake? All right. I apologize. I'm not griping. I love it. It's going to be amazing. It's going to go perfectly on my microphone. It's going to keep me on cock warm when I'm jerking off, whatever the fuck. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought when I, t- I thought about it, I said devil horns because it's got the monogram on it already. Who the fuck cares? All right. Hi. Uh, how amazing is that? People send me things and they're the best. I got a rock. I got a cock sock. I got a, a, a story on lock from our friend Joel McKean. And then I got a, 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 a fucking go proc. I can't rhyme that. Uh, all right. So you want to be an Uber driver? Why wouldn't you? You'll have your days free to do this kind of bullshit. Uh, you want to be a Lyft driver? Of course you do. Let's do Lyft first. Here's my code. It's all caps. M-I-K-E-720057, M-I-K-E-720057, to be a Lyft driver is what you want to be. Please be a Lyft driver and use that code from me. You want to be an Uber driver? All lowercase, D-J-Z-W-1-Y-T-T-U-E. It's the holidays. Let me be your Uber pimp and make some extra cash. D-J-Z-W-1-Y-T-T-U-E. That also works if you want to take first-time rides, by the way. If you don't have Uber or Lyft and it comes to your town, you're like, I'm going to use a ride uh, code from my friend Mike. I think I get credit for that. But either way, Lyft, M-I-K-E-7-2-0057, Uber, D-J-Z-W-1-Y-T-T-U-E. And uh, go and use those and, and be in profit. Let me profit. Let me profit off of you, please. Now, listen to this, folks. You're not going to believe this nonsense. I think I've told you in the past that there's a bunch of cool-ass stuff that our friend David Hernandez has been involved in. I've told you week after week that he's got stuff that he's brewing for you, making it happen, making it work. Well, you know, I was telling you he was doing those Facebook caricatures for everybody, which was fucking fantastic. Well, for a limited time, folks, and it's going to be a really quick turnaround on these, he is doing caricature for the holidays that's right facebook character stuff i've talked before he does it's a digital scan of a watercolor formatted for use as a profile pic it's like 600 by 600 dpi uh you can go ahead and contact him through a facebook messenger regarding prices and stuff like that uh again it's a fairly quick turnaround it'll be like uh with a holiday flair like maybe you wear a santa hat with a festive wreath in the background maybe your family in a photo whatever you want any whatever will fit into a facebook photo like the the size of that like i said um, uh, Facebook character profile thing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's probably a head and shoulder portrait would be better. Uh, but again, like you said, a Santa, a snowman, you want him to paint you as a snowman, whatever the fuck you request, he will do these things for you because he's the fucking man. That guy's the badass. Uh, and it's again, like I said, a limited time for the holidays. I think he's actually going to, uh, he's got a display up now of us. Like he did me and Kristen and him and you'll see exactly what it looks like. It's fucking fantastic. So uh, get on board, man, for some holiday artwork from our great friend, David. And if you, if you want, if you don't want to do a holiday one, if you still just want to do a regular one, tell him to do a regular one. Say, Hey, look, I don't believe in Santa Claus. I'm Jewish. Maybe. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. Maybe he paints you on a dreidel. Like a, he paints a Facebook portrait of you with your face on a dreidel. We, we appeal to everybody. Who's got a Kwanzaa thing out there. What do you wear for Kwanzaa? Anybody out there got a Kwanzaa thing you want David to paint? He's in. He'll take care of you. He's not all Kwanzaa'd out. That man's got a ton of Kwanzaa on deck. Uh, (laughs) Step right up and see his giant Kwanzaa. So David is doing holiday characters. Like I said, you you still contact him via Facebook for the prices. It's a digital scan of a watercolor. Again, it's formatted as a profile pic. Uh, Mainly a head and shoulder portrait. But like I said, he'll do you in a Santa hat with a wreath or snow or, you know, a Tin Man or a fucking Grinch, whatever. I don't know. He's got it all on deck. He can take care of it for you. Please contact him through Facebook Messenger for all the prices. He's the best. And again, it'll be a pretty quick turnaround on these because it is the holidays. So uh, it's a special. You thought he was special. You thought he was special. We talk at the town. Uh, that's my imitation of Shirley Manson from Garbage doing the song special. Because at the end, she goes, I'm looking for a new... Mm, and it sounds like uh, Chrissy Hine. It's fucking phenomenal. Both the songs, uh, When I Grow Up and Special. How great is that album? Garbage 2.0. Holy fuck, is that a good album. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, folks. 
we got all sorts of stuff there for you. We've got an Amazon ad. Well, first of all, go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and go to the Joe Business page. That's the most important part. When you're there, we've got all sorts of stuff for sale, all sorts of stuff for download. We've still got shirts and nonsense, and uh, and none of it's moving. I won't lie to you, but I still tell you about it every goddamn week because I should. It's right out there. And, you know, you're like, hey, Mike, you should strike when the iron is hot. Well, part of that thing about sitting around in my house is not doing the things I'm supposed to do. So that's why when I tell you about stuff that's going up on on the web and it doesn't show up, now, look, at this point, you're always like, oh, yeah, we get that, Mike. We know it's really going up. And that's the thing is I don't want to foster uh, 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 discontent among the ranks. I don't want you guys to just doubt me and go, yeah, well, you're never going to do that. We know you never do. So, again, that's all part of me moving forward and doing the things I'm supposed to do. Uh, so, so right now there's the Amazon link, which is on the Joe Business page. Use that, please, especially with the holidays coming up. Black Friday is on the way. Use it during Black Friday and uh, for all of your sales, and then we will get uh, a taste of that. And, again, it's the that's truly the 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 easiest way to help the show is to use the Amazon link because it doesn't cost you anything, man. We get money, they get money, you get stuff. You click on it and you use it to purchase the things you're going to purchase that you're going to purchase anyway, and we get a little taste of it off the top. Thank you for thinking of us. Please use the Amazon link. It's right there on the Joe Business page at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Also, we've got the Patreon page, which is out there and still lurking and is going to be updated soon with all sorts of things that I want to put on there, and I've got a GoPro now. Perhaps I'll do that. Maybe I'll put myself on there doing all sorts of dances. Who the fuck knows? But we've got the Patreon page. I, I really appreciate everybody who's stuck with it in its inactivity. And please know that I'm firing up the machine and we are going to move forward on it. And I know I say that every week and you're like, yeah, whatever the fuck, Mike, you say that every week. I do. And I, I, I own that. I fucking cop to it. Um, because I wind up, like I said, I sit here and I obsess about my past life and go, man, why are things the way they are? And I fucking chase myself around the house for it. And then I laugh at myself. I literally told Shannon, I'll go, I'll, I'll just laugh at myself. I'll literally be sitting in my house and I go, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? This is fucking ridiculous. Uh, but it doesn't make me stop doing it, but I will going forward again with all of your help, all of you people standing on, I'm standing on the shoulders of, of greatness. And that's all of you people, all of your shoulders hunched up around me. And then I'm going to get my dreams. And you're going to go, yeah, finally, Mike got his dreams. It's just me naked on top of you wearing a red cock sock. All right. Um, so I, and I, I want you to do that. Thank you so much. So go to use the Amazon link. Uh, sign up for the Patreon page if you want to. That would be fantastic. And, uh, and I'm going, I'm off to Denver, man. I'm going to be in Denver this weekend. If you're in Denver, if you're a person in Denver, uh, I probably can't see it because I'm seeing my friend. Uh, but I, I could carve out time. Fuck, how often am I in your town? But we'll figure it out, whatever. But Randy and I are going to Denver to stay with my buddy Evil Dennis and uh, his wife Kelly. And I, I guess we're going, I, it was funny, like, Randy, I'm like, what do you want to do? She's like, oh, man, I heard there's a great museum there. And I just went, oh, no. <laughs> hey, I told, because I told Dennis, I go, hey, dude, the Avalanche, the Nuggets, and the, and the Broncos are all in town that weekend. He's like, great. And then I bought plane tickets, and he never once mentioned going to those because I don't think he wants to. His wife probably doesn't want to. I get it. That's fine. Uh, but Randy, we, we might go to a mint. We might go to a museum. I think we're going to a museum. Whatever they said, they said they have great stuff planned. It's exciting. I'm texting back and forth with uh, Dennis about what he wants me to have in the house. Uh, or he, I want him to have in the house. He's like, yeah, I bought your yogurt. And I'm like, yeah, hey, you're the coolest. It's just so weird being 50 and going, hey, yeah, I like that yogurt. Could you get that? And he's like, what do you want for breakfast? We have sausages. I go, well, I like bacon. So he's like, all right, I'll get bacon. It just seems like a weird thing to fucking throw out there, right? How weird is that? And now you're thinking to yourself, Mike, why are you eating bacon? You shouldn't be eating fucking bacon. No, but I'll eat eggs. See, again, when I was talking to him, it was before rock bottom night. I was giving him a list of stuff. And also, there's other people there, motherfuckers. Don't fucking jump me and go, hey, why are you eating bacon already? I'm not eating bacon. But yes, jump me. I'll, maybe I'll take photos of my food and I'll throw it up there and you can see everything that I goddamn ate when I was in Denver. You'll, ah, that's what I need to do. I need to bring you guys definitely into my life. I'll GoPro Denver and you can see whatever my breakfast is. How about if I GoPro breakfast from Denver? How about how much of a waste of time is that? A time and energy. I don't even want to gas up the fucking camera for that nonsense just so you can see an omelet. Hey, check it out. Mike eats sprouts in the morning along with fucking yogurt and blueberries. So I told him, hey, look, I said I wanted blueberries and bananas and maybe some fruit juice. I can have one glass of fruit juice a day. The sugar in it is pretty deadly, but I can have one glass of it for fuck's sake. That's the thing. You just got to work out. And if we're going to a museum, him. holy fuck, I need something to get me through it. I don't know if I can watch, I can look at a Matisse without a belly full of bacon. I don't know if I can inter in interpret what the, the artist was meaning without a fucking thing of pork fat running through my goddamn veins. I don't know if I can go ahead and stare at the Mona Lisa without a hot dog in my hand. That's the kind of fella I am. But see, that's horseshit. Now you, that's just when you rally and you go, no, Mike, you can do it. You can enjoy fabulous artworks without this food killing you. And I'm like, you're right. I can do that. And then I'll buy a hot dog and throw it away. I'll take one bite of it. That's what I'll say. And I'll tell you, hey, look, I was only kidding. I can just eat one bite of it and throw it out. And you guys are going to just shake your heads collectively and go, we don't want to bear you aloft on our shoulders. If anything, we want to bear you aloft on our shoulders of only to throw you into a canyon. 
Michigan. You're going to be in Denver? We're going to toss you off a fucking mountaintop and watch you roll all the way down. How's that for cardio, motherfucker? You're skipping it? You're staring at the Mona Lisa with a hot dog in your hand? How dare you? We are on board. You gave us the rallying cry. We were going to be the ones who fucking helped you. We knitted you a cocksock. We sent you a heartfelt story. We made you a rock. And you're going to fucking turn your back on us and eat a hot dog with the Mona Lisa? Jesus Christ, man. Get all, get a grip. Grab your fucking lapels. Make it work for yourself. We can't do that. Yeah. 